All right, we are live. Welcome everyone, future and present, to this uh, Gius Publications interview, followed by um, Let's Play of Dr. Gordbort's Scientific Adventure Violence. We have with us today two of the creative forces behind the system. We have Grackle and Greg. Greg, Grackle, thank you so much for joining me today, and I really appreciate you being here. Pleasure. Thanks for having us. Of Thanks course. for having us. I, I, uh, I know that it's a little difficult to coordinate our schedules because we are on different time zones, but, you know, that's okay. So um, thank you so much for, you know, coordinating with me. I know it was kind of a rush to the finish there to get everything planned for a, for a little uh, impromptu meeting this Thursday uh, here uh, in April. So thank you very much. And uh, I just want to take the opportunity to ask you a few uh, questions uh, about um, this upcoming Kickstarter. Yeah, it's going to be a Kickstarter is the idea here. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, Greg, you are you. How would you describe yourself as the creative force, or the uh, the original author, or the artist? Mm. How, how do you how do you, how do you involve yourself in Dr. Gord Barrett's here? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll give you a brief introduction of myself, and so I'll give you a bit of context. Um, I'm based in New Zealand in Wellington, uh, and uh, I've been in Wellington for a, a big chunk of my life. And while I've been here, I worked at Weta Workshop. And um, if those of you don't know Weta Workshop, it's a visual effects company, uh, famous for working on The Lord of the Rings and King Kong, Avatar, and a bunch of other films. And we're still going strong down here, although we just struggled through the through a pandemic, through the hard times. Um, but uh, so I've been working there for about 20 years as a concept designer, primarily. Um, but for most of my life, I've been an, uh, a writer, artist, creator of various things. And uh, while I was there, in the early stages of working on uh, King Kong, I started developing my own sort of sci-fi sci project off on the side. And uh, I showed some of it to Richard Taylor, uh, who is the head of Weta Workshop. And uh, he fell in love with it. And I had this idea. We were looking at the idea. Uh, the time for ideas for collectibles like what could we always making collectibles from the feature films we work on which is great but not mm -hmm. of our own unique ip right and so richard was after like what new ideas are out there so I, I had this idea of these ray guns mm -hmm. uh and their thought was well we could take these ray guns we can make them as actual metal ray guns oh, wow. uh, put them in a beautiful tin case they're glass they're metal the all the buttons and dials work mm -hmm. the idea is it's like an antique yeah right? and, a, and a real thing the idea i had this thought that if you opened it up there were like pressed moths and they're flat moths and dust and you can pull it out and show your grandchildren and say like you know your granddad um uh, almost fought in the martian wars or whatever <laughs> so I, I really yeah it, it's, a, it's a fun idea and we um and we ended up making them we ended up selling a whole bunch of them as limited edition art collectibles they're very beautiful um and Do you have uh, one? and they sold it do you have one? I forgot. They're all over the place. If you if you don't mind, I'll walk away from camera. <laughs> Give me a second. I can grab one. <laughs> well, on. why don't You're you finish your introduction first? We'll get yeah. to Grackle, and then you can come back and show us your ray gun. That, that sounds like a good idea. Um, anyway, so we've been developing these things for a while. And, of course, the next quick question Richard had for me was, well, is there a world behind all of this? Is yeah. there, you know, where do these ray guns come from? And I had been thinking about that. So I ended up uh, writing a book about it, the first book was Dr. Gordbort's Contrapi Electronic Dingus Directory, which was a kind of Sears and Roebuck catalog. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, lots of syllables. I'm, I'm very good at coming up with long, ridiculous names that are nearly unpronounceable. So, um, But uh, yeah, we published that through Dark Horse, and that sort of started to spell out the entire world. It was kind of like a joke about consumerism, really, like poking fun at the, at the sort of pointless things that we, we chase after. Mm -hmm. um, and and then I p published a whole bunch of other books after that. And then from there, we created a Dr. Grobort's Touring World Exhibition that's gone, gone around the world, pr primarily through Europe and through China and Asia. And um, and yeah, just continue to grow the world. And then in the last eight years or so, I had, had an amazing journey with a company called Magic Leap, who are based in Florida, who I became very good friends with. Um, and they were developing a very early mixed reality or spatial computing headset. And I, I became good friends with the CEO of that company and decided that uh, I would try my hand at developing video games. So I wrote and directed and built a team mm -hmm. uh, to make a video game of the Dr. Grubbots universe for the Magic Leap headset. And we made the very first video game for that platform. And that was truly trippy. Therefore, there I got to take the ray guns that we'd invented, but actually 
you hold a controller in your hand and your uh, goggles aren't like v they're kind of like vr except you can actually see through and see the world around you so like so an augmented reality kind of thing it's like you would see on your phone except mm -hmm. that you don't have a, a phone in front of you you're literally just wearing goggles and when you look down at your hand instead of seeing the controller you would see a ray gun and when you pull the trigger it blasts and it hits your actual wall because the device is actively scanning your entire space oh wow um, yeah, very, very trippy, very, very cool. And that was a true privilege. But then the uh, pandemic came along and put paid to that endeavor, unfortunately. So mm -hmm. maybe it's something we'll pick back up in the future. But yes, I've been on a bit of a crazy journey with the entire Group Sports Universe. And now, very lucky uh, enough to have met uh, Grackle here and Brian from Pro Crowbar, mm -hmm. uh, who wanted to make a role playing game. And of course, I uh, uh, grew up. As a kid, loving role playing games, right. playing Dungeons and Dragons, and, and a dozen other systems. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, uh, when these guys asked if they could do a role playing game, I was like, hell yeah. When I saw the, other, the work that they'd done, it was incredible. So here we are. And um, just a massive compliment to these guys for what they've done. I thought, based on what I'd seen with Kickstarters, that, you know, you'll do a little a little quick start manual mm -hmm. that you would offer, yeah. um, you know, which would be a few pages and very simple. And what they've actually produced is stunning. It's a beautiful, beautiful document. It's 120 plus pages or something. I mean, the um, quick start so itself is over 100 pages long. So I don't it, yeah. I wouldn't even call it a quick start at that point. You, you almost uh, I, I wonder really how impressive the final product is going to be just on what you're giving away for free to get people interested in the system so uh very yeah. excited to see what happens in it so yeah, a, and that's a good place to pass over because um yeah. yeah why don't you, you have one of that, the, yeah, the writers you, of that right yeah here. why don't you go grab that ray gun and uh grackle why don't you introduce yourself and uh well, tell me uh, a little bit about how you got involved with uh crowbar and how you got uh involved in in this project specifically yeah, absolutely. Uh, Greg is far too kind because we are really the lucky ones. Um, <laughs> so Brian Saliba uh, is the one who had this flash of genius. He saw Greg's amazing world and all the ideas and the fun settings and themes that were going into it mm -hmm. and thought to himself, basically, I want to play D&D in this world. Yeah. Um, and so he brought on myself and uh, Zach Tyler mm -hmm. to help write that with him. Um, just to basically, we, we, we considered making a full new uh, system, but decided, oh, oh, holy I can't keep talking. It's, they're <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Look at that then. Oh, man. Uh, so what backer level do we have to back to get one of those in our in our pledge? Uh, that's what that I'm going to do. That is actually a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, um, <laughs> this is the Man Melter. It was actually the very, very first one I designed. The original artwork for it is on my wall over here, the original painting of it. Um, as you can see, it's a beast. It weighs a ton. It's it's uh, metal. It looks like a giant piece well, of cast iron. Is what it looks like. Yeah, they're actually these are actually glass. Yeah, it is cast. It's um it's very dusty because it's been sitting on my shelf for many years. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't get your hands on these anymore. Maybe on you know in the secondary art market or something like that you could find them. But unfortunately, it, no level of uh, tier of um, <laughs> of reward is going to unlock these babies because they're all in someone's hands. Unfortunately, but I think we are. I think there are some other goodies that we're trying to cure for that though so well if they're yeah. half as cool that's as that ray gun, then we're all in for a special treat i gotta say so i wish Maybe. i could turn my camera around because up here on the shelf i've got a, like a full size uh it's called the fourth law and it's a massive submachine not submachine gun uh, light machine gun size beast mm -hmm. of a weapon wow it weighs about 20 kgs you could have to convert that to your you're a futuristic units over there in America. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, uh, so uh, back to you, Grackle. Um, you were you were introducing yourself, and, and mm -hmm. before we continue, I got to ask: uh, uh, Do you dress this way all the time, or is this a special occasion? So, thank you for reminding me. No, and that is part of it. Is that once you know Brian Saliba got us introduced to the world of Doctor Gord boards, we were just like immediately hooked. It's such an evocative place. Mm -hmm. um, the place being Venus, but the real place being the solar system, Earth, all these different concepts that are going on, too. And so some of that excitement has translated into my ridiculous getup today, <laughs> just to try to capture just like a tiny piece of what's going on here and uh, bring some of the silliness uh, into this into this recording. Yeah. So if you could describe uh, Dr. Gordbor's scientific adventure violence, uh, the, the setting, um, and, and this is a, a question for you, Greg, uh, if you could describe what mindset you were in when you when you created this world or uh, when, when you um, visit it, uh, either via mm -hmm. role playing or, or just thinking about it, what, what are some of the, uh, the things that come to mind for you? Is it supposed to be fun and uh, you know, crazy? Is it a serious place um, dealing with uh, serious themes? Or, or tell me a little bit about how you perceive the world. 
That's a great question, and that's a lot to unpack in there. On, on the surface level, it's very much inspired by science fiction of the past, of mm -hmm. specific, specifically of Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers of the 1920s and 1930s. I was mm -hmm. just, and pulps after that of the 30s and 40s. So it's very much, that's the veneer, that's the surface level, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, if you go and watch those old black and white Flash Gordon uh, shows, that's what I grew up on. That's the vibe I was trying to capture. But uh, instead of having Americans go into space, there it was, I, you know, it, I said it a little bit earlier, and what if like a, the British Empire went to space? So thematically, it covers a lot of ground. And I, it is serious subjects, actually, but I don't, I, I, it's very much tongue in cheek and satirical and poking mm -hmm. fun at those subjects. So it's bad people going to space to do bad things. Um, but really, it's, it's the, that's what most of the books have been around because it's <laughs> satirical. Like I said, the first book was kind of fo poking fun at um, consumerism, sort of just blind, you know, the, uh, it was almost like all the ray guns were kind of comparable to like these plastic things you buy from Kmart or Walmart or whatever, that you, or, or over the infomercials back in the 90s mm -hmm. that you just don't need, you know. Um, or that we chase after for some crazy reason to fill a hole in ourselves. And then the next books were uh, the, the, the subsequent book, uh, um, Scientific Adventure Violence, actually, is so the subtitle of that, Victory, Scientific Adventure Violence. Uh, that was a book about uh, uh, propaganda, basically. It was like, I viewed it as propaganda for children. That's, that was what I had in my head. Okay. What if Dr. Broadbolt was making a book that said, basically, gee whiz, look, isn't it great? We're going to space, and there's all these heathens out there, and we're going to give them you know, religion and, and all the great things that we have. So it was very much about colonialism. Having grown up in New Zealand, you know, that, that's something that's uh, pretty close to, close to me. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of exploring all those themes. But um, there are they're, the main characters are not heroic. Dr. Broadwood is not necessarily a good guy, not mm -hmm. necessarily out with uh, everyone's interest in heart. Lord Coxwain is an aristocratic buffoon. He, mm -hmm. he doesn't have the empathy or the, you know, the self-awareness to be doing anything truly good. He's just out in the, in, on Venus, which is this beautiful, lurid jungle of wild animals, this untouched, mm -hmm. beautiful, natural place. He's just out there, pissed off his head with a massive gun, you know, <laughs> just having a good old time. And uh, at everyone else's expense, and that's the kind of world you're in. And 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 there are layers from there. As I started to write the books, it started to become like a Venusian resistance, colonials going there. It's very much the the a little bit of Tarzan and and King Kong of the 1930s, those old serials like mm -hmm. the Uncharted World, but with a little bit more of a perspective on the peoples there that were actually getting trodden on, you know. And um and I think that's where the role playing game becomes super interesting because you get to explore that side of things, which is very lightly explored in the books. Books are very much from uh, uh, explored from the perspective of us going to Venus, if you like. And um, in the role playing game, of course, you can take other personas, which is super exciting, and actually play the Venusians or right. play some of the robots and, and all that kind of stuff. So this role playing um, uh, uh, book uh, that uh, has been created by Crowbar, Crowbar and working directly with you here, Doctor Gordbord's Scientific Adventure Violence, is it specifically one of the books in the world? Is it a combination of all of them? Is it exploring just one of those themes, or is it just a gateway to every and everything uh, within this uh, fantastical creation that you've uh, put together here? And I don't know if this is a better question for you or if this one's for Grackle. Might take that one. Yeah. yeah. So it's very it's very much supposed to encompass the whole of the Dr. Gordbort universe. Mm -hmm. uh, right now in the quick starter, we're focusing very much on Venus. Mm -hmm. But for the full book, we'll allow you to take your travels to the moon and see, you know, the civilization there that has been pretty immediately conquered by Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, go to Mars and see the remnants of a once powerful and um, technologically advanced civilization that through its own... Um, Self-obsession and just uh, uh, irresponsible use of resources has collapsed into something of a post-apocalyptic almost uh, society and the and Earth itself. So the plan is to really encompass all of what Dr. Gorbord's is. And I loved also what Greg talked about, which is something that really attracted us the, to the project, too, is that you get this on the surface, you get this rampant sci-fi space violence with all sorts of hectic characters and just absolute silliness. Mm -hmm. But then there's also a pretty thoughtful exploration of the consequences of this stuff, um, yeah. which is, I think, unusual for this. A lot of D&D, &D, a lot of role-playing games, a lot of stuff like this includes colonialism and imperialism, but just as a given and doesn't really get into it much. It just kind of celebrates the adventurers and the heroes. Mm -hmm. um, and in Greg's original thing, we see, you know, sometimes in the background of a panel, sometimes in the foreground, but always you, you see someone usually a Venusian or sometimes a human, someone is on 
someone is suffering because of the callousness of one's the on the receiving end yeah yeah exactly yeah. and they're not thrilled about it um and so that was something we were really excited to explore more and just to you know you're, we're focusing on satirizing british imperialism um and focusing on the ridiculousness of it but also getting into the real you know the problems with it uh and so i think that's an exciting place to stage stories in this world to see okay what goes on what happened within the venusian freedom fighters you know there's different factions within that mm -hmm. how do people respond to a bunch of earthlings with powerful ray guns going around the solar system mm -hmm. um so it's a challenging obviously challenging themes to approach but it is it reminds me a little bit um of Starship Troopers for our American audiences mm -hmm. of uh, you've yeah. got this silly ultra violence at the on the on the front and then mm -hmm. you get to dig in and say okay there's actually some themes here that are interesting and compelling and just good to be you know thinking about in a thoughtful way that's interesting mm -hmm. so you know it there it's it's it gets as deep as you wanted to but if you wanted to just have a crazy globe trotting uh gun toting ray gun adventure uh that's the surface level but for those that um, want to investigate those deeper themes if they choose to at their tables uh it opens up an entire world for that so it sounds like mm -hmm. there's a little bit of something for everybody to enjoy absolutely and we just want to make sure too with the book that um you know we, we definitely didn't want to set out to make a colonialism simulator you know mm -hmm. that's basically the opposite so you know you can be all sort of you know jag off that you want to be but there's going to be consequences for that you are going to be confronted with you know what you're messing with so there's a lot of silliness involved but trying to just have the realism of you know if you go around like a bunch of D and D murder hobos, there are people that are on the <laughs> receiving end of that. So let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, about gameplay because we're talking about <laughs> murder hobos a little bit, and, and uh, you, you, we're, we're talking about gamification here of uh, a piece of art that uh, Greg has created here. So, uh, Greg, I want to get your input a little bit about how uh, turning it into a game. What were some of the ways that you helped uh, Crowbar uh, turn this from something that you made that was, uh, you know, that you that you put down into words and art in a book form and how did you help them shift it into a gameplay thing? And I know you're going to want to defer to Grackle on this, but I want to hear about your perspective of how that went down. And then Grackle, mm -hmm. I want you to think about how, um, you know, how after getting his feedback about what he wanted the game to look like from his work, uh, how you gamify and coded that into uh, mechanics to make uh, to make that vision come true. So uh, Greg, complicated question. So let's hear what mm -hmm. you have to think yeah. about. It's a good question. Well, I can say the relationship was very good, very easy to do. I mean, I thought quite, you know, quite simply, the the um, I would send a bunch of artwork and then um, I'd start and then wave goodbye and then uh, <laughs> and then later I would see this amazing thing turn up and uh, that is actually more or less what happened. I had a pretty light touch on it, but we did talk around, you know, like those themes, how how to touch on those themes and how to portray them. Mm -hmm. I don't think of it this 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 world as a really simple one of like you know Earth bad, uh, solar system good. It's not. Right. It's not that. You know, the characters. Yeah. In, it's it's as nuanced as people want it to be. Mm -hmm. It's and it's not necessarily an indictment of British colonialism. It's of of human elitism in any way, you know, <laughs> the lack, lacking of empathy and, and just forcing one's will on others. Uh, and so that can, that can happen within the Venusian population or any of the populations. It's not, um, I want it to be as complicated as the real world, but, uh, and I also, but I didn't want it to lose the satire and the humor, the irony, it's based right. on irony. Mm -hmm. And I know that's a challenging thing at the moment because a lot of people choose not to, or, or don't understand irony in the, uh, and it's, so that it's a complicated subject. Some people think, want to take it at face value. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, so I would really encourage people to revel in that irony. You know, it's, it is it is okay to explore these things. I love, the thing I loved about Dungeons and Dragons that I love about fiction in general is the ability to explore dark topics, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we wear Darth, v Darth Vader t-shirts, you know? Yeah. We, we do this culturally. When you think about it, what are you wearing when you wear that t-shirt? If you're a little seven-year-old kid wearing it, you've got, the guy blew up a fucking planet. With mm -hmm. the <laughs> yeah. It's a very weird thing. And we, 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 we revel in these things all the time and we, we play with dark ideas. Uh, and, uh, and it's, it's worth remembering that that shit is complex and it's in all of us. So mm -hmm. I, I, I love a uh, role playing game as a, an avenue to sort of explore these themes within your, in yourself and bounce around against the, the other players and, uh, and against the story world you're in. So I, hopefully what these guys have put together is, uh, and I, th I think it is, uh, weave something that's actually quite rich that people can really get their teeth into. Um, but other than that, yeah, it was uh, 
set them loose and they and and see what they came up with and like i said i've been utterly blown away because the depth of what was created mm -hmm. uh you know I, I think the books as much work as i put into the books they show a surface level and these guys have really dug in and extracted so much more so well that's uh, yeah. fantastic and i know in my previous interaction with brian and craig uh, this is my first time meeting you grackle but in talking with brian and craig about their rackham veil product previously i it was just incredible the richness of the world they can put together with uh role-playing mechanics so Let's uh, let's now shift to Grackle and and uh, hear a little bit about how you took these. I don't know if I want to call them grandiose, but I, I'm missing the adjective that I want in my head. But these um, uh, uh, these in incredible ideas uh, that Greg put together, and and how did you put them uh, into mechanics uh, that uh, allowed you to explore these uh, themes, ideas, places, um, uh, conflicts, everything. Yeah, I mean, it, Greg was, has been a dream to work with, and it's just been a lot of fun of us all really getting into the books, getting into the fiction, and, and just, you know, all these brainstorming sessions where we're thinking, like, okay, how do we connect that? Oh, okay, what's the mechanic for that? How does that connect to 5e? Mm -hmm. uh, and Greg has been really helpful. A lot of it was we'd come to him with questions or pitches about, you know, the world. There were some, there were a lot of, like, uh, kind of unfinished edges in this world, you know, and there were things to explore. And so we had a, we got to ask a lot of fun questions, like, um, very early on, we're talking about, okay, what are druids like in this world? You know, mm -hmm. is it possible mm -hmm. that they actually have magic? And we're kind of getting Greg's idea on, on how the universe feels in that regard. And we, we yeah. definitely, um, which brought us actually to, a, you know, he, he was like, no, there's not really magic in this world. That, that doesn't fit the vibe, which brought us to, I think, a very fun uh, uh, way of thinking is that druids are basically it's experiment subjects for like biological agents you know they're experimenting okay. with all sorts of crazy all this whole world is based on fantastical ray gun technology and crazy you know mad scientist experiments basically and this is one that has a more biological aspect to it which was a very fun thing to work with um so yeah it's just been a dream of it's such a rich world but that still has a lot of room for us to uh kind of flesh it out or think about you know how the nuts and bolts of how this thing actually kind of works in practice mm -hmm. um so it's been very fun i'm really excited for people to get to uh get into this world and play around in it yeah and i am chomping at the bit here and i really want to <laughs> jump into our uh, let's play um but before we uh wrap up here with greg um is there any kind of final plugs that you want to or have a little advertisement for uh your uh, uh, your work here uh, with uh, Dr. Gordbort's Scientific Adventure Violence. Before we jump into a quick animation that, uh, from what I've seen of it, uh, is going to set the tone in a really fantastic way. Oh, last comments from me. Um, well, thanks for doing this. This is fantastic, really enjoyable, and I hope you guys have a great fun time playing the game. Uh, that no, I've got no plugs at the moment. We're doing a bunch of interesting stuff, but we'll make noise about those when those, <laughs> when those come out. And um, yeah, enjoy. Fantastic. And without further ado, uh, let's take a look at our little animation here of Dr. Gordbort's scientific adventure, Violence. All right, what a great animation to get us in the in the zone for uh, some excellent Dr. Gordbort scientific adventure violence. I'm I'm pumped. Uh, that was that was really cool. So, uh, Grackle, you will be our DM today, and uh, joining us now are Rosie down in the bottom left and my friend Will in the bottom right. Uh, this will be our first experience with this uh, system and uh, setting, and I think we're all very excited to uh, have our first foray into the world of ray guns and Venus. So, uh, Grackle, do you want to tell us a little bit about um, uh, how that uh, animation came to be and then transition into uh, telling us a little bit about this adventure? Yeah, the animation's been uh, they made a little while back is uh, just represents a little bit of the tone. And we could kind of think of that a little bit as a prequel of what we're seeing now. This is kind of back when humanity was first spreading itself across uh, the solar system with the help of Dr. Gord Bort's uh, ray guns. Dr. Robert being this genius mastermind, eh, 
some say hero people with a little more insight would probably say some sort of kind of exploitative capitalist warmonger um, <laughs> who developed ray guns and uh, sells them to you know the British military but also whoever the hell wants to buy them and stir up a little bit of profitable chaos for him so yeah today we'll be playing in what is for better or for worse his world uh, what we're calling Dr. Gordbort's scientific adventure violence uh, we're going to be playing off of the quick start that is currently available right now uh, for free at exaltedfuneral.com um, and this is all building up to the Kickstarter that we'll be launching in August for the full book. Uh, so very excited to take you guys along on a trip to Venus uh, and to hopefully have some crazy sci-fi adventures out here. Excellent. Uh, well, I'm certainly looking forward to it. Great. And just a little bit more about the background. The there's a longer history that uh, is actually laid out more in the quick starter, but the long and short of it is essentially what I said. Dr. Gordbort, capitalist and warmonger extraordinaire, um, invented these ray guns. These allowed uh, Britain to essentially conquer Earth and then go out and conquer space. And we're dealing with a time frame of like end of the 1800s, uh, beginning of the 1900s. Uh, and today we'll be playing in 1922. Uh, so Earth has conquered the moon. Um, and the, you know, the kind of um, collapsed uh, resource extractive uh, world on Mars and now is on Venus, uh, essentially controlling it, but also heavily resisted by Venusians um, of various um, persuasions and of various politics. There's a lot of different factions within the Venusians as well. Um, yeah, and so the main, this is all, a lot of this comes out of just the crazy ray guns that Greg invented. And so that's something I'm excited to play with today. All sorts of weird technology. Um, yeah, and let me get you, let me set the stage a little bit. Um, I will be your uh, GM, what we're calling your Gordbortian mastermind today. Okay, um, I like it. <laughs> it is, like a lot of things in this system, uh, a bit of a mouthful, but... That is um, part. That is part of it. That is part of. Uh, that is also part of just a world where Britain has conquered a lot of the solar system. Is you're going to get a lot of ridiculous words floating around. Well, should I uh, uh, set th set the scene with some music for you there? Uh, um, I'm just going to say GM. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Yeah, I think GM is the best. <laughs> All right, um, so we're loading up the uh, soundtrack now. Uh, I am Eximo Haya Haya who uh, appears to be a uh, v uh, Venetian. Um, mm -hmm. is, is that Venusian, correct? yes. Uh, Venusian, yep. So mm -hmm. I am a uh, Venusian uh, native to the planet. Uh, Rosie, do you want to introduce your character? Yes, I am Vengeance um, Potente. Is that how you say it? I believe that would be uh, Potentate. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, so it begins. <laughs> Oh, I do this stuff all the time. That's terrible. Okay. I'm going to go with Potante. Um, it's yours. Do it. <laughs> and she is a human vigilante. So she looks uh, pretty tough and badass. Lots of cool weapons. My guy has a tentacle face. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my character is Yusuf Papazian. And uh, he is a human mouth, um, middle class Brit. So, uh, so I'm a, a newsie, more or less, working the beat, trying to get my stories out there on this new planet. Yeah, and that uh, brings up a good point. Is a lot of what we're doing is adapting Five E to this kind of this crazy setting. Uh, so the the bard in this case is referred to as a mouth. The ranger is a tramper, uh, and the fighter is a belligerent to try to get a little bit more tonally consistent. Uh, and to give you a background on this, also we mentioned it a little bit with Greg, um, but this is a world without magic. It has all sorts of crazy technology, but um, magic is a silly superstition. This is an age of reason and science. Um, but there are essentially this still runs as 5e so all the stuff that your you know your warlock or whoever have you would be casting through uh, magic is instead focused through technological apparatuses so you you have all sorts of different and they're actually marked on your pregen sheets all sorts of different weird gadgets or we call gadgetronics um, that you actually use to cast your various spells um, and another notable difference uh, between this and 5th edition, and then we can jump into this, is that everything has a malfunction threshold. You know, shooting a ray gun, casting a spell, 
operate in any sort of technology. Uh, they're listed throughout, um, but they have a malfunction threshold, which basically means if you roll a natural number within that threshold, it's often one, but it can be you know one to two, one to three. Then we have a bunch of tables essentially for bad shit that's going to happen as a result. Okay. The goal being some hectic sci-fi adventures. I mean, so let's rock and roll. I so I see on my weapon here, my second-hand Earth Elite Forces G G thirty-three sniper rifle has a malfunction threshold of one to three. So does that mean that um, when I roll a D twenty to attack, if I roll a one or a one through three, it fails, or is there a yes. different a separate roll for the malfunction? No, so that is if you roll a natural one through three, then it, you will have a malfunction, and we'll roll to see what happens there. Um, it, it's a little bit different with spellcasters in that um, if you're making if you make a spell attack roll, then it's the same thing applies. But even if you cast something that doesn't normally require a d20 roll in five e, mm -hmm. um, like something that would just require a save, you still have to actually roll a d20 just to see if you malfunction. Fantastic. Okay, I think I'm on on the same page. Great. So we are on Venus. It is the year of our Lord, 1922. The Venusian freedom fighters are on the brink of collapse on this region of Venus, which is basically a bit of a backwater, but it's rich in these Venusian crystals, this important but poorly understood energy source. Uh, and we find ourselves in the major settlement of Split Gut Gulch, which is a melting pot in danger of tipping over. There's human settlers there, entrepreneurs, missionaries, tourists, and soldiers but living alongside Venusians in a relative, but also kind of tenuous peace. Uh, most of the Venusians have been relegated to menial labor in the human town, but a lot of them are Venusian freedom fighters, uh, sympathizers or operatives to various degrees. Um, and like I said, also, again, there are factions within that force too. That is not a monolith. Um, you'll also see Martians or moonlings and robots traveling through. Um, though they are fewer than the humans and, and Venusians here. And a little more background on the town. A few months ago, uh, the British Colonial Expeditionary Forces, the BCEF, uh, dammed the river to power the settlements and forts uh, and try to run off the VFF. Um, it wasn't like a lot of things they do. It wasn't particularly well planned. And while the dam does provide some power, it also flooded the area and created a very dangerous marshlands around there. Um, and the BCF are kind of setting up outposts throughout the region, um, trying to basically control the area and especially the mountains where the crystals are. Um, but also the VFF are always in the jungle, always in town, always lurking. Um, and so there's this kind of tenuous moment of peace as people are living their lives here. Would you like me to um, overlay the Split Gulch map for you? Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. And... Let's see. I also drop that to you guys real quick. Can we drop that as a... Can I drop that uh, into here as well so people can look at it? Of course. Just drop it right into um, one of the channels in the Discord. Okay. And that way Will and Rosie can see the map that I'm overlaying. Like into the admin channel works? Uh, I think you don't have the rights for the admin, but on topic or off topic would be fine. Okay, thanks. I'm dropping this into on topic. Great. So this is a dusty frontier town. Um, it's kind of surrounded by the wild Venusian jungle. Um, a lot of travelers here, especially the upper crust, are greeted by the Gordbort Industries Commerce Center and Rocket, Rocket Transport, which also has a can canteen inside. Um, there is also the Bucket Exotique, which is a pub in an English style run by a Venusian gentleman. Um, there is a Anglican church, St. Dick's Chapel of the Holy Vassal, down the streets as well as a British Colonial Expeditionary Forces barracks. Um, and there is a hyperrail to the east, a hyperrail station that leads up to the north uh, through a, a, a British Colonial Expeditionary Forces uh, fort. And there is, um, a, again, around all of this, uh, the blood jungle and the, you know, the various strange sounds that emit from it uh, at all times, kind of echoing throughout. Uh, and also skirting around the, the edges of town are the... Um, 
shacks and tents of a lot of Venusians who have been displaced from this area um, and have found themselves, many of them find themselves working for the humans in town in various uh, regards. So that's where we find you. Um, I'd say the three of you have, uh, say, met briefly. You find yourselves out here on the um, kind of the fringes in this, in this rustic frontier town. Uh, we find the three of you uh, within the bucket, the bucket ex satique in in pub um, over, over a drink brought together by uh, your shared interest in adventure or finding yourselves as relatively new folks in town. Uh, exact reasons are up to you. And this is a rustic adobe tavern with metallic accents and saloon doors. It's an English hunting lodge style interior with a lot of strange Venusian beast heads mounted on the walls. And the furniture is kind of like the, um, the dark wood that you would expect of, uh, of an English hunting lodge, but it is made from the pale green and pink um, local flora. So it's got a taste of uh, British home, but with a very Venusian flavor to it. Uh, there is a proprietor, a bartender. Uh, there is a robot um, pianist tangling away some tunes. Um, you see a few uh, BCF privates in here. Uh, as well as a few uh, Venusians and other uh, patrons, uh, and that's where we find the three of you. What do you guys? Uh, what are you guys up to? So Eximo is um, lamenting at the fact that um, most of these uh, beasts uh, hanging on the walls, uh, he actually uh, had put there um, before it had gotten overrun by BCF. Uh, he was known in town as uh, quite the shot. So uh, he says, ah, used to see all kinds of game in these parts. No longer. He takes a pull from his ale, setting it down and wiping a trickle of foam off of his tentacles as he blinks his large round eyes rhythmically, hiding a tear or two behind them as he looks at one of his favorite mounted pieces. They don't deserve to look at these. No longer around because you shot them all, right? If only. If only. Well, there's plenty of people to shoot. Ah. <sighs> problem is got to find somewhere high otherwise they'll catch me not so quick mm -hmm. on my feet these days I, I can help you there oh the name's vengeance vengeance uh, it's a little on yes. the nose yeah well that's what the, that's what they call me uh, I was born with a different name but I'll keep that I'll keep that to myself. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my experience in fighting crime has uh, led me to this name, Vengeance Potente. <laughs> Potential Potente. Potente. Interesting. Indeed. And uh, yeah, I came here because I, I heard about the um, everything that was going on, but I wanted to decide for myself uh, who's in the wrong and and take action. Well, it depends who you ask. A lot of the native Venetians, or however you choose to pronounce it, depending on what your vernacular is. Um, some say the VFF is in the right, and some say the BCEF is. Me, he takes another pull. I just wish I could get back to hunting game, and they would stop all of this. Used to be quiet no. around here. And, and, well, yeah, before I got here, it was quiet, I'm sure. But another way to put it is the story depends on who pays you and the way you spin it. And I'm willing to spin it for whoever pays me. Hmm. You know, that's a good way to think about it. I've never thought about it that way before. And you, Potente, how do you go about deciding who is a law breaker here there's not there's not a whole lot of laws besides keep your head down 
You know, I think it's I think it's between what I decide is right and what I decide is wrong. You know, not about who tells me what's right or wrong. It's just observing, I guess, and deciding. You forgot no one law. law. <laughs> you forgot one law. Don't fuck with the BCEF. Hmm. Well. Uh, at, at that, um, the bartender who you've met, uh, known to be Bridget, uh, this stern, red-haired woman, uh, plops down another round of drinks at your table. Just, just, ah, but that's certain. Or at least don't be fucking with the BCF in this establishment, because it's on me to clean it up every time somebody does. They make enough mess on their own without you giving them any extra reason to do so. Understood. Bridget <laughs> gives you a gives you a curt nod, uh, and says, uh, "If you don't, if you don't mind me saying, there seems to be a, you know, those fellas over there, and giving you the look while you've been in here." You look over in the direction she kind of surreptitiously gestures. Um, you see three tough-looking Venusians, kind of eyeing you up. You see one looks to be not giving you any mind. Um, but a the two, the other two of them are kind of trying not to show that they that they've been looking at you. Just me. Um, hard to uh, give me sight check actually. So go ahead and roll a d20 and add your uh, oh my god your wisdom modifier which is minus two. Okay, so that's a three. Okay, uh, they they are looking at you. Hi. Hi. Ex explain that. <laughs> I just like duck behind um behind um what's your name again? XMO um, or the newsy? No, the newsy. Yusuf. Yusuf. I hide behind I hide behind Yusuf. <laughs> the little small guy? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> that seems to be my cue. You're looking at me, now I'm looking at you. I don't know why you're looking at me, but I'm Yusuf. What can I do for you? And I take a few steps towards these gruff-looking fellows. One of them, uh, they kind of look at each other a little bit. One of them uh, stands and comes to kind of meet you along the way at your table and says, um, Well, fellas, fellas, uh, no offense met at all, none whatsoever. Um, just uh, your new folks in town, always curious to meet them. Uh, my name's Herb. Uh, what are what are y'all's names? Yusuf's the name. Stories is the game. I got news from home. I've got news from your home. News from my home. News from everyone's home. <laughs> <coughs> Vengeance. Ah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you good. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm Vengeance Potente. Uh... Mm -hmm here to explore a little bit, see what's going on. Interesting name. Thank you. It's French. Interesting. <laughs> uh, I'm XMO. I don't do much talking. <laughs> hey, fair. I know a lot of people don't like talking. I know a lot of people that uh, kind of pauses significantly. And he says, a lot of people that prefer action. You those kinds of folks might be? XMO I'll, starts to nod. Yeah, I'll, I'll lower my face shield and start doing some, uh, you know, ha tricks with my mage hand. Ooh. Okay, you roll your, uh, you lower your Trevor Thick and Sons fetching face shield uh, and begin to manipulate uh, your mage hand. No, go ahead, and this will be fun. This is our first roll. Go ahead and just give me a uh, roll a d20 for me. And this is Mage Hand is a cantrip that normally does not require any sort of roll. This is just to make sure that your face shield does not malfunction. So this was an 11. Okay, we're fine. As long as it's not a 1 for this one, you're okay. All right, nice. So yeah, I'll just do some uh, some hand tricks, some cards, pull, pull some cards out and flourish my uh, uh, the Mage Hand behind, uh, you know, with this face shield. Very, very impressive stuff. Uh, talented newcomers in town. Always interesting to meet. Always interesting to get to know. Um, there any? 
Hmm. What's your interest? Uh, well, just making conversation. What's your? Uh, how do you feel about all these? You know, soldiers running around. He lowers his voice a little bit so that the BCEF nearby won't hear. How do you feel about the soldiers? <laughs> it's a cop out know. answer, Newsy. <laughs> Fuck them. That's what. And XMO stands up and drowns his beer in one gulp and slams it down on the table. What's the job? <laughs> okay, go ahead and give me a... Uh, man, you probably shouldn't even really make you... No, I think that's I think that's uh, direct enough that I'm not going to make you uh, persuade this guy. <laughs> um, he goes, oh, oh, yeah. Jobs are jobs are jobs. There's all sorts of jobs to be done. Uh, my associates and I... You know, always have work for interested parties that like to see uh, good things done. And there's a lot to talk about. Um, he he, he kind of looks back at his companions. He's about to go on, uh, but there is um, suddenly you hear a bit of commotion uh, out outside of the of the pub, and a lot of uh, you hear a kind of the 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 din roaring of an airship, and you hear a lot of chatter, and it sounds like people. Um, moving about outside and he seems uh he, he kind of perks up at that well vp and he looks at uh violence <laughs> Same thing. um yeah i was like wait is that me um <laughs> vengeance looks at the um what's the guy's name Herb. herb. Oh, herb. And so it just says, what's going on out there? Good or bad? He, um, he frowns, actually, and he says, uh, it's a good question. And he, he, start, he, he and his companions uh, move outside, and you can see that essentially everyone else in this, um, in this tavern, including Bridget the bartender, are kind of putting down what they're doing and poking their heads outside and moving out into the, uh, into the street. It's right. causing, there's quite a bit of ruckus going on outside. Yeah. I'll head outside. All right. Eximo I'll grabs... Follow. Seems like a story. Eximo grabs his righteous bison indivisible particle smasher ray pistol and turns a few knobs before following. Great. You guys head out to the street. Um, you see, it looks like the whole town is out here. Um, and you, you perk up and you see... Um, Um, you see a uh, airship puttering over the town, um, and so one moment here. It is carrying; seems to be transporting a massive tank um, of uh, <clears throat> looks like a lot like the main battle tanks of the BCEF that you might have seen in various newsreels or uh, magazines or such things. This is a powerful piece of machinery. A little out of place for the jungle around here. Uh, you haven't seen this kind of uh, machinery used around here. Uh, probably hasn't been used since the main invasion, the main war. Um, and it passes overhead. Uh, you see everyone around gawping at this. Um, two of you, let me see. Yusuf and Zemo, your passive perception is high enough. Um, that you actually notice, looking around the crowd a little bit, you notice a BCEF officer um, and a church man. Both don't seem to be surprised by this. Everyone else is kind of gaping and pointing and asking questions. They both seem excited um, about this this incredible piece of machinery, but they don't seem as shocked as other people. You ever seen anything like this? Eximo asks Yusuf. Haven't not cl this close up at least of films and such. I, I, this clergyman seems like he may know what's up. I'm gonna go sidle up against t to see what he knows. I'm mm -hmm. gonna kind of scurry over um, and just kind of like get close enough with my pad and tape pen and be like, "Looks like you know something about this. Spill it." <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead and give me a I guess that's going to be a persuasion check alright uh plus six uh, persuasion that's going to be uh, dirty 20 dirty 20 okay um, 
you catch him even as you come up before he say anything. He say, "Lord bless us for this great gift." Um, and then you come up and you ask him this very direct question, and maybe lost in his own musings, or um, you can quickly see pot might be lost in the sauce uh, as you can as you can detect a hint of hooch on his breath. Mm. Um, he says, uh, "Oh, um, I, I, mm, I, um." Hmm. Don't don't know too much. Powerful piece of technology, um, and he kind of with that with that dirty twenty, he kind of lets slip a little bit. Um, he says, "Could tilt the whole balance in the area. Could tilt it. Could be a powerful weapon for Jesus Christ of the Anglican Church. Could be a great thing. Bring the heathens on board." And he kind of blinks and catches himself, but then he kind of in compensating for that slip kind of makes another slip um, and says, oh, I've been waiting. I can't believe it's here. How long have you been waiting? And I'll uh, I'll pull out some of that. Uh, I dumped that drink that Bridget had given us into my like hip flask and I'll pull out my hip flask and kind of hand it over. Like, how long have you been waiting for this? Uh, let me see. I'm going to roll over here and see how, how much he's going to... How much he's going to divulge. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and he, he kind of catches himself. He's lost in his reverie um, for this thing and in his dreams of, of what it could mean for him. Um, mm. So he, he kind of speaks without thinking. Uh, he says, uh, I'm not sure how many days it's been. Not long, long enough to assemble a crew to go find it. And oh. um, mm. around it's, it's around the moment that he says that, um, that you hear a poof, this kind of explosion echoing uh, from the distance to the north. Uh, and looking up, you can see in the trajectory of where the uh, the, the uh, this this airship was going, uh, a little a plume of smoke in the sky, mm. and you cannot it's it's some distance, but you can't see the airship anymore. Okay, I scurry back over to my new friends, uh, Vengeance and XMO. I'm like news news every day, stories all around us. What have I been telling you? I'm not sure what you've been telling us. I can't hardly keep track of it myself. Never had the mind for a newsie. Tell you the truth, I can't even read. Looks like gibberish to me. <laughs> See, I was going to say, all you got to do is write down what happens, but if you can't read, can you write? No. Ah, well, that's a shame. That's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> um, are the... The, is Herb still hanging around? Yeah, he has just, while this is happening, he's been kind of distracted uh, by the goings-on. But he, as you look around for Herb, you find him looking at you, and he's, he's sauntering over, you, over to you again. What do you make of that, Herb? Looks to me like, uh... Looks to me like something just fell into our laps. Kind of up for the taking. This could mean, could mean everything here. His, his, his voice is low. He's there's the crowd of people are kind of around and, and chattering, so his voice is low enough that it only carries to you guys. Um, and he says, "There's a few of us in town who don't care for the current leadership around here, and a bit of technology like that could help someone uh, make an adjustment." to the power structure. We're thinking about going hunting. What do you folks feel like doing? Feel like joining us? Yeah, I'm picking up what you're putting down, or Let me see like... what my friends want to do. <laughs> this guy looks like a hunter. You said hunt, this guy's a hunter. I think I think we've got something going on here. Oh, hey. Herb, I got some information for you. I think we might have some competition, though. Jesus man over there, Anglican dude, he said, uh, he. They, they've had some time to assemble a crew. I don't think that's us unless you know Jesus Man over there. No, we are 
not affiliated. He gives uh, one of his companions a look, and this this tougher looking fellow kind of stiffens at that, looks over at the at the church man, and is kind of sizing up the crowd. And you guys um, does not look pleased to get that information. Uh, and Herb says, "Well, it sounds like uh, I think there's an expression you guys use. The game is afoot." Yeah, game Looks is like, foot. Good. Also, the price went up, so what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> there can be a compensation arranged. Um, there is also the satisfaction of you know, doing a good deed for your community and the influence that comes with having affected who is in charge of the community, if you catch my drift. Indeed. At this point, you guys are standing outside the pub. You hear this, um, I neglected to mention, there is a, um, you had seen inside on a wall. It probably hadn't noticed it, actually, because it's pretty, um, it's not too frequently used, uh, this job matic machine. It's like cathode ray tube screen with this metal frame all bolted to the wall. Um, you can hear it even from outside over the din of the crowd because it goes nuts. Uh, louder than you, people jump. It's obviously louder than anyone's heard it go. And it goes, Bounty alert! Bounty alert! Grodbort Industries announces an exciting opportunity for adventurous souls. A priceless piece of cutting edge military technology, a prototype, prototype Garganthutherium 8X tank, has inadvertently been delivered into the wild Venusian blood jungle. For its retrieval, Dr. Grodbort's Industries is offering a substantial monetary reward and access to the finest Aether Oscillators in the galaxy. Worthy candidates, please report to the Split Gut Gulch Commercial Center for registration and signing of disclaimers. Good hunting! And then, uh, much more quietly, it goes, Dr. Grodbort's Industries shall not be legally or morally liable for injuries, <laughs> amputations, mutations, or deaths sustained as a result of an attempt, nor are freelance recovery teams eligible for health care or insurance coverage benefiting GI employees, and continues for quite a bit of time until it starts <laughs> looping the announcement. Are people running to, to that place, or is it not of interest to most people? It seems to be a lot of the, good question, a lot of the, um, like, upper class travelers and such don't seem to be freaking out as much. There's a there's a decent number of just kind of aristocratic folks on vacation or, or doing some such business. You do see any uh, some of the more, you know, adventurous types seem to be moving in that direction. People are, a lot of people, you know, just the general townsfolk are chatting with each other, but a lot of people have begun to kind of clump. Uh, you can see some of the soldiers are heading back towards the barracks. Um, Churchman is heading back with some companions. Uh, and some people are heading towards the Gorbert Industries Center, for sure. Well, unless this guy's got a way to speed us along, I think we should just, you know, ignore him and head with everybody else. Unless his price went up even more. What say you, Yusuf? I like the idea of what Herb was saying about getting in with the, the new people in charge, though. This person, this bounty sounds just like coin, which is great. But I'll take coin and influence over just coin. Hmm. How about you, VP? Leaning towards uh, <clears throat> going with Herb. I don't, I'm not swayed by the uh, the money. I think, I think the BCEF is... Wrong. They're, they're a bunch of dicks, right? I mean, yeah, right. yeah. So yeah, so like I'm good to let's fuck them up. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. let's fuck them up. Yeah, let's fuck them yeah. up. Yeah, I don't need. You can have my share of the money, Yusuf. If yeah. I even get any, <laughs> I, I don't want the money anyway. I just want the pride, and I want yeah. the uh, I want the clout. So story and coin this way, Yusuf. Follow us, and then I kinda, nice. I kind of tap uh, VP on the shoulder, and I. Double finger guns. Brave adventurers, oh. not swayed by coin, only by what is right. Adventure into the jungle after the take. God. Writing this down in my journal. I'm sad that my portable typewriters is still big. Do, so I'm journaling it for later. Do, do, you, do you narrate everything you write, you said? Well, you'll find out. <laughs> It's a good narrative device. <laughs> You're kind of doing my job for me, and I'm not. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> um, Tune in to find out more. 
tune in <laughs> now <laughs> as this uh, tougher looking uh, Venusian. Uh, you've been talking to Herb, who's a little a little more slender, a little more um, urbane. This tougher looking leader um, strolls over. You can see he's actually in a bit of um, as he gets closer and opens up a little bit towards you, you, you notice that he's actually just a little bit, he's hiding his face a little bit, um, just through his movements, but also through his, uh, through his attire. Um, and he comes over, and uh, Herb gives him the nod, um, and this guy says, um, well, I think it's time for us to get out of town, then. You, uh, you're willing to join up, you're willing to do what's right, you're willing to get these Goddamn BCF out of here. Love to have you. We'll be heading north into the jungle. I'm in. Let's go. Let's roll. Right. Those fools heading towards the bounty station don't have the same survival skills I do. I've been around these parts for a long time. We've got, we'll get the jump on them and the edge. He gives you a nod and he says, uh, you and me too, we, uh, we understand the jungle. The uh, jungle's going to eat most of those folks alive out there. And you make your preparations. Is there anything else you would want to do in town before uh, you depart? Let's see. Um, what kind of stuff do we have? Was there... Uh, oh, here's my yeah, equipment. It should be... Equipment. Yeah. I've got five days rations. Does this jungle trip seem like it'll last longer than there and back back? Uh, this, uh, this leader who identifies himself as, yeah. uh, Rizgik Kraxen, or Krax. sorry, Krasen, uh, indicates that that should be enough. Uh, he also says, we'll be able to resupply on the way if that's necessary, but I don't expect this to take anywhere near that amount of time. If it, if, hey, if it takes us that long to get there, then we won't be the first people there. Fair enough. All right, well then, just one last thing before we go, and I'm going to take my, um... Righteous bison, and I'm gonna shoot that bounty board that was. It keeps talking. <laughs> okay. Um, go ahead. And, go ahead and make an attack roll for me. That's thirteen oh. plus six is a okay. nineteen. Grunt bard in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> he sputters and the cat and the tubes go crazy and the, the, the dings and whistles ding no more. Uh, and um, the proprietor, Bridget just shrieks a little bit and goes, Oi, come on now. And I lost my Irish accent for her. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the proprietor of the place, uh, Ralph Garthlax, just yells at you and says, uh, Hey, now don't come back. I don't own that thing. <laughs> Someone's gonna replace it, but it's still rude. <laughs> Alright, man. You guys get shooed out of town. Rizgik gives you a little he gives you a look also, Rizgik uh, Kratzen does, and says uh, you attract a little bit more attention than I'd like, but I appreciate your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> See how well that it's weapon works. It's our first works. day. <laughs> <laughs> Not giving a ton of, you're not projecting a ton of confidence. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see how that weapon works against uh, living targets. Like yeah, I, I never miss. <laughs> see, I, I hit it. One for one. Yeah, one for one. <laughs> <laughs> and you sally forth uh, from the town into the Venusian jungles. Uh, as we make our way into the jungle, um, this is the uh, blood jungle that you want me. This to is the up? blood jungle, yeah, the Venusian blood jungle. <laughs> All right. um, and uh, uh, as we, everybody, I, I I put the pictures in on topic for everybody else if you want to oh, take thank a you. look. Yeah. I have um, a cheap, naughty magazine <laughs> in my equipment. <laughs> Would you like to use that now? No. I mean, no. <laughs> some light reading on the way might be nice, right? I can give it to Yusuf and he can just read it. I was going to say, I'm surprised I didn't write that one. How does the journalism compare? I mean, I hear the stories are the best part. But they always are. The only reason anyone reads those. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so as you move forward... Um, 
the uh, the the Venusians near you uh, that that you're traveling with. Uh, the the band is a um, is Rizgit Kratzen, who seems to be the leader of this band. Um, now that you've gotten out of town a little bit and get to talk and chat with him a little bit, um, Zemo, you would have heard of this guy. He is a notorious uh, rebel leader in the area, known for being ruthless and fanatical. Um, there was also Herb, who is a more urbane and charming uh, member of the VFF, uh, a, a, a Venusian by the name of uh, Bub, 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 uh, excuse me, Bubovk, Bubovk. There we go. Uh, B-U-B-B-U-V-K um, who is uh, you meet them outside of town they have a uh, this little mechanical kind of mini uh, little it's somewhere between like a tricycle and a tank uh, just like this little device kind of like a kid one of those kids motor car things that he is uh, piloting stubbornly and then a few other uh, gorillas with you and Rizgik says um, uh, newbies why don't you uh why don't you show us how it's done? We'll be following along with you, but I want to see how you handle the jungle. Uh, so if one of you wants to give me a, uh, say, a survival check to navigate the uh, the jungle. XMO looks at Yusef and says, take notes on this. Uh, as he gives a 14 survival. Okay. Gonna mean you approach this uh, situation in a in like a more advantageous situation. Um, so why don't you go ahead and roll a d12 for me? Uh, the quick start I should be plugging the quick start more includes um, several encounter tables. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna roll on. That's what you're rolling on here to see what you uh, encounter as you make your way through the blood jungle. Six. Six. Okay. And go ahead and roll a d4 for me as well. Three. Three, okay. Oh, interesting, okay. Um, you see ahead of you, and with your uh, with your survival check, you are able to spot this uh, situation before it spots you. Um, you see a moonling, um, a moon person, uh, riding a Barnaby's Thrusk. Um, I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have all of the art we have art for all of these in the quick start. Um, I do not have it hooked up to our um, <coughs> our uh, interface here, but this is a uh, kind of a short, maybe dog-sized creature um, with these elaborate mandibles, um, like a, kind of like a larger dog. Um, if you can see this at all, it's kind of what you're mm, looking at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and the moonling. Uh, is seems to be moving along just with that uh, riding that creature, and there are a uh, there's also a swarm of these little um, these little wind rats, uh, these other little Venusian critters, kind of flying around in the area. They have not noticed you, or no, with your survival check, you kind of spot them from a little ways off. Uh, what do you want to do? Um, I give a whistle between my tentacles to VP. And kind of gesture for her, uh, for her to um, come forward, and then I point out the uh, tangos up ahead, and I say, "Moonling Thrusk, what do you want to do?" I mean, they don't look threatening to me. Hmm. Like I think if they attack us, we can take them. But I'm pro animal, so like I'm down to kill the moonling or attack the moonling and let the animals go. You know. Wow, wow, moonlings, huh? Are you a moonling? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> well, I never miss. I, mean, I don't know. What do you want to do? I do never miss as I as I pet my secondhand Earth Elite Forces GG33 sniper rifle. <laughs> I bet I could uh, pop a tick off a horse's ass with, from this distance. I think I can cap that moonling. I mean, or we could just let him go. Then we could all have pets. Let him go? <laughs> I mean, it's not... A, it, that, that seems kind of anticlimactic for somebody named Violence Potentiate. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, like, you know, maybe they're on our side. 
What do you think, Newsy? Well, what about... How what's, do you feel about animals? Do you want an animal? What's the better story? I mean, I'm, I'm pro-wild. Like, I want the, <laughs> the Venetian <laughs> wild to go live in the wild. Yeah, you know what? The more people we have in our group, though, the better the stories get. So what if we recruited the moonling? And then he betrays us, and that'll be a twist in the story. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I mean, I'll kill the moonling if you want. What do you think? That it's ruins the betrayal. That rules the betrayal arc. I like the I like the betrayal arc. Hold. Hey, <laughs> hey, moonling. <laughs> hey. And then we, thus we give up our advantage. <laughs> <laughs> the moonling starts a little bit, uh, and he says, um, "Who goes there?" I'm just a humble traveler. Oh, Join well, I us. I don't trust him anymore. Um, well, this is VP. I'm XMO, and this guy's taking notes. Uh, we're here to <laughs> we're here to cause some problems for the BCEF. Oh, are you? Are you? It lowers his voice. Members of the VFF. Um, nah. No. Oh. Sh Almost. Sh Almost. Should we be? Almost. Yeah. Are you aligned with the Venusian freedom fighters in any way? Yes, that oh. we are. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. He kind of relaxes a little bit. He says, okay, cool. Uh, Sweet. Oh, okay. Same What do I say? That's tight, man. Pounder. Is there like uh, a secret handshake or something? Yeah, he just daps you. <laughs> nice, nice. For the record. For the record. What's, what's your name, sir? Madam? My name, um, sir, is uh, uh, Genus Thirdly. Genus Thirdly. Nice. Nice. Well, where you are you headed? Join us. Uh, out here gathering information. Hmm. What do you got? A, well, there's a lot that. Spotted some things. I, I took some high ground recently. It, there's a lot of movement in town that you're aware of. People moving, I'm sure, if you've come from there. Uh, it looks like the BCEF are planning to take the railway east and curve around the lake to get to the um, to get to the general area where the uh, where that where that great metal monstrosity seems to have crashed. Um, to see if there's anything else I can. Ugh. Anything else I can tell you? Oh, it crashed. Mm. Did you see That's... it? Did you see it hit the ground? Or... Oh, I do have information for you then. Good. Yes, I did not. the The jungle is thick. I did not see it crash exactly, but I did see it seemingly uh, for no reason that I could immediately divine. Um, saw the the ship uh, burst and crash into the and drop the tank onto the ground mm. Mm. you think the bff shot it down maybe some uh, of us i don't hmm uh while you're talking with him uh Rizgik, uh makes his way up to you uh, and he, he hears that and he goes you know there's a few different bands of us out here I, I can only say for certain that it wasn't us it's possible but um gonna make a uh when do you want to make a uh, persuasion check for me? See what information uh, this guy has or puts together. Not it. <laughs> uh, I'll roll it. Ooh, nat 20. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this guy goes, I have extremely sharp eyes. <laughs> 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 and now that you mention it, <laughs> there, I didn't see anything hit it. I didn't see anything hit hit the ship at all. It just seemed like it all of a sudden on its own mm. dropped. And, and now that you mention it too with my sharp eyes and your insightful words, <laughs> uh, the ship continued on. The airship Ooh. continued onwards. Uh, it didn't look too perturbed. But the tank crashed bodily into the ground. Sabotage oh. or BCEF junk? Pick one. Yeah. 
This is it's strange, and this is, of course, the um, the tank itself. While the BCF commonly use them, the tank itself is, of course, the property of Goreport Industries, and uh, who knows what them um, what they get up to or their motivations. Smoke and mirrors. I formulated mm. an idea. If we get that tank, we can probably cause a lot of problems and blow a bunch of shit up. Well, yeah, we'll restart well, it and yeah, take over was... the world. The... Obviously, that's the idea. Oh, I just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page. Oh, I'm not going to drive a tank, though. Well. All right, and I'll sit on top and shoot people from the turret. But I thought that... I you thought that... shoot people, too. No, you yeah. got to drive the tank, Yusuf. Yeah, yeah, I thought that uh, Herb and, and uh, Krasin wanted this tank, though. Yeah, but... Yeah, we're going to take it with them. They can have it when we're done with it. <laughs> Wild, I like it. What are they gonna say? We have a tank. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I mean it's all for them. We're just adding we, some flair for the story. We're borrowing we say, it right first. while they're standing next to us. <clears throat> oh, I I imagine we were in a huddle. You know, we, we're you know doing the, you know, yeah. You hear uh, you hear Rizkik loudly say a few paces away. Wonder what they're saying in that huddle. <laughs> <laughs> um. Thirdly, yes. Um, how how? Um, oh, I guess you weren't like right there when it, when it crashed, were you? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, are we going in the right direction? Yes, the, the lake, of course, is in your way, but there, uh, but there is a uh, there is a Venusian. He looks significantly at Rizki because there is a Venusian uh, base along the way that that may help you, but you will have to skirt the 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 lake or make some crossing across its uh, across its fetid and toxic waters. Did anybody okay. bring a boat? I'm a great swimmer. Mm. But the water is toxic, VP. Yeah, I, I heard that part, but I'm just saying, <laughs> if it wasn't toxic, <laughs> I'd swim the shit out of that river. Like, but uh, no, don't have a boat. Um, um, we'll figure it out once we get there. Yeah. How big is this lake, uh, thirdly? It's large, but you probably circumvent most of it. Uh <laughs> Taking the landward route, you uh, may be able to get by with just uh, going through the marshlands. They are uh, they are difficult in their own regard, but not. Uh, you will only. Hmm. He thinks a little bit, scratches his head, and he goes, "Well, if you stick to the marshlands along, you would only actually have to cross the water at the uh, at the river by by the bridge up in the northeast, by the uh, the ruins of what the BCF call the Upper Gooster Outpost." So we can cross, avoid toxicity, and potentially blow up a BCF out outpost. I think this is a good plan. Yeah, who That's controls the bridge? The bridge, uh, and he gives Rizgik a look. Um, let's see if Rizgik's gonna. Okay. Rizgik uh, is kind of looking at you. He's impressed with how you've managed this interaction so far, and his mind seems to be a little bit elsewhere. And he says, um, well, it's going to be a surprise to those uh, those BCF taking the railway up. Um, they might be a little... Uh, who's to say who's in charge up there? Let's just say. The, um, the British, these fucking idiots, um, they've got these prefab outposts that they just drop out of the ground on whatever the fuck they want. They somehow drop this one upside down. It's immediately fucked. Um... So, the jungle has made use of it, let's just say. Uh, around this time, too, as you're just chatting, uh, thirdly just goes, Oh, my sharp eyes, look! Uh, and you see just uh, kind of some, uh, some waves overhead, um, this scenic airship uh, looks like kind of a passenger, um, kind of pleasure zeppelin, uh, travel zeppelin, is just kind of motoring slowly uh, mm. north as well. God damn, we probably get a roll on. Can we shoot it? I mean, it seems to be out of range. Yeah, we should probably get a roll on Moon uh, Genus. Thirdly, sir, yeah. good doing business with you. Are you tagging along? Yeah, come with us. 
No, I have more information to gather, but thank you. I am not so much of the fighting type. Um, and Rizgik uh, kind of leans in and he says, <coughs> Hey, uh, steer clear of uh, town. Steer clear of actually anywhere south of the dam outside of town. You're all right. Stay clear of the dam. And you guys uh, proceed? Yeah. Yeah, let's head towards that bridge. Right. It is a, still a ways off, and along the way, um, you you approach a uh, VFF, a Venusian Freedom Forces uh, guerrilla base. As you get closer, you can see Rizgik's um, already sour mood uh, curdle even more. Seems to be dreading this a little bit, um, but that you can you can see him, especially uh, Yusuf, especially you pick up on this because you know people. Uh, you can see that makes him just more surly, really, and a little. He's becoming even even more brittle as you approach this area, and you move through the jungle. And what appears kind of suddenly before you, uh, hidden very much by the jungle, is a collection of tents, storage containers, firing positions, and weaponry. Um, this is the, uh, there's actually a, a VFF gorilla base that should be in that, uh, in I've, the, in the I've chat got it up there. for you, yep. Awesome. Um, you see there is a, um, uh, there is a, uh, you see there's a leader, uh, seems to be present, giving some instructions around, uh, a number of gorillas, uh, just in the area. Uh, you can also spot a moonling, um, hanging out here, uh, as well as what looks like a captured, uh, Martian. Hanging out. Also within the um, within this camp, there is a broken down Venusian battle tank that seems to be um, there's like one Venusian on it that seems to be kind of giving half-hearted attempts to to fix it up, but it doesn't appear to be operational. Cousin, what's the deal here? Why uh, why did you need us if you had a, a guerrilla force already closer in the jungle already? We have a lot of irons in the fire, and these guys, um, these guys aren't always willing to do what it takes, and they also might not have, uh, they didn't have the perspective that we had. I don't think they'd talk to Genus thirdly, and they couldn't see what we could see from town. Uh, we're in a better position to actually do something about this. Plus, we are more willing to take initiative than this band. Uh, Yisfril is a bit of a... Stick in the mud, maybe. Bit of a bit of a bleeding heart. Mm. Mm. The, the leader here. That's right. Yusfril. As you say this, uh, Yusfril, uh spots you as you enter camp and approaches uh, with a, with a couple of her gorillas, um, and she says, "Oh, Rizkik, welcome to camp. Of course, um, you and your associates, I can see, are welcome here, and for resupply or anything." What brings you uh, through here? Rizgik, uh, Rizgik says, uh, there's some business up north, but I um, guess it's time you know, just so you can pull anyone out if you need to. But uh, that operation you tried to talk me out of, it's, it's happening. Anytime now, soon, the, uh, the dam is gonna blow. And is for blanches. Uh, you guys all realize, um, those of you who had seen town enough, know that this this dam is what created the lake. It's um, just north of uh, the town itself, and you kind of put together that um, that would be pretty disastrous if that thing goes. And uh, is for like immediately turns pale uh, when he says that. Almost lost my mustache there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and they begin to argue. Um, and you can see um, the members of their respective bands are also getting a little tense. Um, Israel is insisting, she's like, that will be massive devastation. That will kill some Venusians, but that will kill a lot of humans, that will kill a lot of human civilians that are here, a lot of uh, people that are just, there will be tourists. Uh, business persons, uh, obviously there's mixed feelings about this, but this will be massive, indiscriminate destruction. And Rizgik just says, um, exactly. It bleed them enough and eventually they'll get the hell out of here. I don't, I don't know what we're arguing about. And Isfril says, there are 
other methods, we have tried a more targeted approach and appealing to the human population back on Earth as well. Uh, we've, we've peeled off a bit of support. There are some friendly um, journalists that we're aware of and other, and other writers and, and influential people. It is a slog, but this is indiscriminate and this is massive destruction. We, I, this, this is counterproductive. And it's getting uh, increasingly tense between these two uh, factions. Is there anything that you guys want to do? So I'm fighting within the VFF causes strife. <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're gonna have a huddle here, and um, yeah. Um, this brisket guy kind of seems like a dick. Um, he well, I kind of love him. Yeah, you. Uh, but I mean, yeah. that town was nice until everybody showed up. But by destroying the town, then the town is destroyed. I don't want to destroy yeah. the town. I just want. You're from here. This is your home. How do you feel about all those people? I mean, there are women, children, you know, families there. Like, indiscriminate destruction isn't exactly what I signed up for. I was more hoping to kind of, you know, stick it to the man, kill some BCEF. But, I mean, people have called that their home for a long time and it's changed for what I think is the worst but to destroy it all and start over seems a little drastic is that what he wants to do I was under the impression that okay maybe I didn't get it completely <laughs> well, I don't think he was very forthright with us to begin with he talked about taking you know getting to this tank he didn't really say anything about blowing up the dam until you know maybe he alluded to it when we were talking to Gr thirdly I yeah. see. Okay, so he's going. He's planning to blow up the dam. I thought the dam was just going to burst. No, and it comes out throughout this uh, throughout this argument too that this is there is a separate. That's actually why he was in town is to organize that. There's a separate group already on their way to the dam. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. I don't love him. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not crazy about just destroying a town. What if we just, like, left and got the tank while they're arguing? Do you think they would notice if we tried to slip out? I mean, he's a sneaky hunter like you are. I think, I mean, even I've heard of this guy, and uh, I'm not around from these parts. Mm. So uh, if he knows the jungle as well as you do, surely he could track us. We're not, you know, I'm not the most quietest. Well, we could just... Most quietest? We could most just... Most quiet. We could just shoot him and then pretend it was somebody else. Maybe, you know... If they finds us? What if what if one of us just shouts, Oh, they got a gun! And then, like... <laughs> you know, they kind of start fighting each... I don't, I don't know that that's better than... Uh, that sounds like indiscriminate violence as well. But... Yeah, but... What if we tried to stop the dam from... What if we just tried to, like, thwart his plans? So go along with it until we get the tank and then be like, Sorry, Charlie... We're, yeah, we're but it here. seems it seems like from this conversation they were just having that it's a separate group going to do the dam while we're doing this. And so right. it seems like our efforts would be split. It seems mm. like we have a choice here. Mm. I see. I thought they needed the tank to blow up the dam. I don't think so. No, this sounds like a separate operation. Oh. Are they in like completely separate directions? Because I think like we could still pretend and just go there and then we deal with it once we get there and go towards the dam and try and they are unfortunately in different directions <laughs> um it is right <laughs> it so is, we are at a choice <laughs> you have an, you have an impasse here the, the dam is basically directly north of town you're heading uh northeast and skirting the uh the lake around to the northeast so it's it is you, you would be going you would have to double back pretty far to the west out of your way and then come back if you wanted to I say we slow these guys down by making them fight each other and then go steal the tank and cause some problems with it. That's what I think we should do. Ignore the dam? Well, if we get these guys to fight each other, then maybe they won't be able to get the dam done. Does it... Did it... Does it sound like, <laughs> for lack of me fully absorbing what you said already, Grackle, um... Mm -hmm. Does it sound like this plan is already in motion from another group of forces that aren't with us? 
Uh. It does. It, it, you, you surmise just from what's being said. Uh, Rizgik's making it sound like uh, there's nothing they can do to stop it. Yeah. Uh, it, it seems it seems possible that you know if if uh, you know some people left immediately in that direction, um, they might be able to stop it. You don't really know the timing of it, um, but it is uh, it's it is tricky, and you, you're not sure if anyone will be able to get there in time. You're also not sure. Um, you know, you don't really have the contacts with the VFF here. If you did get there, you're not really sure what you would be looking for also, though. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll scratch that plan. What plan? The infighting plan. Um, it seems, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it, that would be, it's definitely possible and it might, it might work. You're not really sure. You don't have fully enough information, but it sounds like that's a separate group. Tensions are, ri tensions are yeah. rising between the uh, between these two factions while you're uh, huddling, by the way. Could get behind, like, letting the town fall apart. I think we and could just... choose a side here. Yeah. Right? Well, I know Rizgit. He's notorious for being ruthless and fanatical to the cause. I support the cause, but his methods seem a bit extreme. My vote is... What do you is... think, Vengeance? I, th I think we should uh, we should try to stop the dam being blown up. Even if we don't get there in time, we we need to try. Vengeance, do you think that you that that we could get there in time? Do you think that we could maybe talk to this Yiz uh, Yizfr Yizfril? I think there's a very small chance. Um, maybe. But I'm also thinking, like, bigger picture, if we can't stop that, what can we do? And maybe we could get the tank. Uh, but, you know, I don't, I don't live here, so I, I'd be okay going with, uh, with, uh, high, uh, high Ahaya's choice. Um, what if we got... Isric out of here and one of us delayed and talked to Israel uh, Israel and found out some more information about that because it seems like things are like I look to pick my head out of the huddle and like things are getting heated over there it looks like it's mm -hmm. going to come to blows pretty soon mm -hmm. we're going to have to talk to someone or yeah let's try to break gonna them be, up we're going to be short of a leader pretty soon we could try to break them up, and um, I could go with Riz Riznik, and you could go with yours, Furl, and you try and talk to her, and I just try and, like, calm him down and agree with everything he says. Yeah, that's a good idea. You talk to the, the, the big guy. He's pretty scary. I'll come with you. I <clears throat> am sympathetic to his cause, so maybe I can uh, assuage his concerns if... Your di diplomatic measures fail. Sounds good. All right, let's go break them up. Yeah. Hey, break it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, Rosie, give me a. <laughs> God, give me a persuasion check. What do you? Say? You're just saying. You're just yelling. Break it up. <laughs> no, I'm going. I'm going over there and like pulling them off each other. Like, hey, break it up, everybody. Calm down. No need to fight. And I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna be riding uh, behind her. I'm gonna be riding. Uh, the brave vengeance steps in between the uh, the two VFF, trying to calm uh, and bring uh, calm to it and wiser heads. And I'm gonna uh, write a puff piece about uh, vengeance. <laughs> uh, well, vengeance, go ahead and give me a persuasion check to break up this tense interaction. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's gonna... not my strength. But yeah, it's going to be, yeah, so it's a d20 uh, minus uh, minus two. So the puff piece thing that it was supposed to be bardic inspiration, can I give her that d6? Absolutely. It might not be... Worth yeah. it. It might not be it. Yeah. Okay. That's a um, six. Mm. Total? Yeah, total. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, what? So you just you just yell "break it up" and you get in the middle of them. Is there anything else that you say while you do this? I say, "Hey, stop it! We're all on the same side here. Everybody, just chill out." 
All right, Rizgik does not look any calmer than he did a moment ago. Might be even angrier. And he, he kind of whirls on you and he says, You taking this one side? You all too soft to do what needs to be done to get these fuckers off our planet. Whoa, 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 I'm not whoa, soft. whoa, whoa. I'm not soft, Riznik. I'm you just saying, soft. break it up. I'm not soft. You look soft. I'm not soft. <laughs> <laughs> just chill. All right, with, with no, that. No, I get punched in the face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with that terrible persuasion check, he does swing at you. <laughs> I duck. Uh, well, let me see. Yeah, no, it's all right. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, t -t 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 -t. Oh, that's not great. Uh, that's a 15 to hit you. Uh, is that the, uh, your armor class is 15? 15. 15. That, so that does hit you. Um, he's just going to use the butt of his weapon. So he's just going to give you... Okay, just two points of damage just dukes you kind of backwards. You stumble back a, a, a breath. And he says, uh, I don't want to work with anyone who's too soft to do what needs to be done out here. All right, you know what they've done all over this place? It used to be a thriving town down there, and they dropped all their fucking buildings on top of it. Put us all to work. All right, you don't want to see that underwater. I don't want to see you around, okay? I'm not soft, and I punch him. <laughs> Okay, give me an attack roll. Do I add my Yeah, like, let's let's do the um strength. Give you a plus five on that. Alright, that's a twenty. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, that hits. <laughs> um roll a D four of just like punching damage for me. Three. Three. Ugh. It's just to show him that I'm not soft. I'm not trying to like actually hurt him. Yeah. I'm just trying to gain some respect. You see, uh, immediately, like, all his associates, you know, like, rifles raise, um, Ray, Ray rifles raise, and the other side, uh, the other faction raises their weapons, and he kind of puts his hand up, and he says, See you later, soft one. And they, um, he starts to walk away, like, keeping your eyes, as he, he and his band kind of melt into the jungle. Is there anything you want to do? So we're good? <laughs> no. No. Shit. Uh, Isfril comes over and says, uh, I suppose I should thank you, but this is bad. Um, I need to send, I need to send everyone I can down to the dam to try to stop this. Um, Rizkik and his folks are going to be out there in the jungle. I would watch your back. I don't know what you people, what you want, but I think it would be best if you, if you, if you left. Guys, let's go get that tank and meet him at the, at the, at the dam with the tank. Israel, when you're sending your people down there, is there, uh, is there any possibility that you know uh, what they're up to? Is, is there any use that we could have to stop them? Or do you know what they, their plans are for this tank? I, I, have, I have enough people, and I know I should know the, v, the VFF agents involved at the dam, and we know the jungle well enough. I don't think you can, respectfully, I don't think you would be of, of much help to us with that. We can move quickly and... <laughs> Hopefully, maybe talk to them if we get there in time. In terms of the tank, I mean, you've seen we've been working together for a while, and I know what kind of man he is, but Rizkik is... He is vehement. He is extreme. If he gets his hands on that tank, he will... Well, I would shiver for any human man, woman, or child that happens across his path. And and she kind of softens a little bit here, and you can see a little bit the resolve falter. She's just had a very tough interaction. You see a little doubt creep into her face, and she says, maybe he's right. I mean, that maybe that's what it will take, and maybe a little bit of blood right now will save a lot more going forward in the future for us, but it is 
quite a lot to bear, and I it will not it will not make us look good. It will reinforce a lot of the she gestures kind of towards you, um, Yusuf. She says it will support a lot of the narratives that people put in the Earthling press about us. They don't need their excuses, but it won't help at all. Yeah, there's some pretty nasty stuff that goes around back at home. And that's something, too, you might have noticed. If you hadn't encountered a, a VFF uh, base before, it's much more, obviously, it's much more organized, it's much more professional, and it's also just a much much more... I mean, civilized is a very loaded term, but it's it's just much more of a um, outfit than the kind of uh, savage bands that are usually portrayed in kind of the mainstream uh, presses. So this it might be... If you're someone who is, you know, more off off the beaten trail and kind of a, a, a free thinker, this might not shock you that much. But if um, someone who was raised on just strict earthly media would probably not expect to find what they found here. And especially not someone like uh, Isfril is um, this kind of thoughtful leadership is, is not that is not how the earthlings portray their their opposition in the VFF. Yeah, and having you know, worked for the newspaper that was bought out by the big corp. You know, I've, I've seen my share of propaganda and I'm pretty sick of it. So mm. I'm looking for the truth out here. Good. Well, Isfril, if you say this out loud, Isfril says, well, if you find the truth out here in this jungle, please tell me because there are, everyone's got their own and we're all trying to find ours. Good luck to you. Um, I can't tarry any longer. We have to get. Um, we have to try to stop this. Yeah, I think XMO, you're right. We need to head off after uh, this guy. To see if we can catch him or beat him there. I hope your your skills are as much as you tout. They are, but I'm afraid that no matter how good our way with words is, a man like Risk it is not going to understand diplomacy. Well, there's two sides to every coin. Uh, I'll, I'll lead mm -hmm. the way. Great, Rosie. Also, as you leave, she catches uh, she catches you, and she says, um, "Thank you for trying to broker a peace here. That is that was generous of you." And she offers uh, she offers her hand. All right, I shake her hand. <clears throat> and then she hurries off. Um, you kind of watch her go, and it's it's kind of there's it's kind of one of those you blink, and she is just gone into the jungle along with her band. All right, you continue um, skirting the lake off the um, the jungle. Proceeds ahead of you. Uh, who wants to uh, lead this uh, this expedition? I will lead with my extensive experience in the jungle. Uh, do you want the uh, blood jungle map up or? Uh, sure. Yeah, we can have that up for okay. some flavor. And you want a survival uh, check? Yes, please. That is going to be a 24. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ooh. You are going to absolutely have the drop on whatever you, whatever you encounter. And I'm going to ask you to roll another d12. This time is on the marshland encounters table. As the jungle, you, kind of, you move through the jungle into um, the more fetid kind of swampy areas. Um, the, this lake is, as we said, artificially created. So it kind of, some of it is just lake and it goes right up against jungle some of it has more transitioned and it's like a swampy marshland area and this is what you guys are entering would you roll on the d12 i rolled a one and then a three on the d3 a d4 if you need it oh thank you right ahead of me uh no actually i don't for this one uh roll a d6 for me actually that's a three three okay you <laughs> let me find these guys There we go. Okay. Uh, you spot ahead of you a herd of um, uh, you see three um, beasts. Uh, they are you would recognize these as a Venusian hunter. Uh, you've probably mounted one or two of their heads. These are called uh, well, the humans call them Milton's drunken fussock. Looks like this big guy. Mm -hmm. um, you, as a hunter, and especially with your uh, with that survival check you got, 
these are, pr um, what do you call them? Uh, herbivores. Uh, they are <laughs> impressively stupid creatures. Uh, they are just the biggest dumb fucks around in terms, even like as far as beasts go. Um, you know them to move in groups and they can maybe defend themselves if aggravated, but uh, just dumb as a brick. And they are, uh, they are just eating some, uh, some flora along here. Probably makes sense to avoid them. How close are we to the tank? Uh, at this point, let me double check. Uh, you are skirting the, you're probably about halfway there, you would estimate, maybe a little shy. Uh, you've been traveling for several hours. Um, you've been traveling, like the, the day is getting, it's getting low and the, the sun's getting low in the sky. A lot of the day has passed. Um, you feel like you're making good progress, but, um, and you can actually see when you, now that you get into the marshland, that's a little closer to the, the edge of the lake itself. You can see across the lake to the north, you can see a little plume of smoke rising that you assume to be the craft site. Still, still a ways off, though. If we were closer, I think we could use these animals to our advantage, maybe to get the drop on the uh, whoever or whatever is surrounding the tank, but might be a little far. Perhaps it's best if we just avoid them. What do you think, VP? Are you... Yeah, I think, I think let's just avoid them for now. Newsy, you want to take an etching, or are you good? Could, I could strike a conversation with it and see if it knows anything or see if it'll, you know, hitches a ride. Maybe we could tra travel faster that way. Well, it's a very dumb animal, so I don't think it speaks Venusian. Well, that's fine. I could speak its language, but, you know, it, it may not. It, it, if, it's that dumb, if it's that dumb, then it may not be worth it. Uh, you would know, uh, Zemo. You would know as a as a hunter of these things, and with that survival check, you 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 do know that these things are sometimes ridden as mounts. Uh, they're not super fast, but they move at a good clip. Um, it, it it is it is doable um, if you would like to attempt that. Hmm. What do you think? Maybe I could just tell it to you know. We just want a short ride, and we'll give it some food, or you know, give it think a about name. Think the story. Well, right, like I have a. Uh... Destroxulonic Plausive Force Destabilizer, um, which would, you know, let us get close to it and hold it in place if you wanted to talk to it. Alternatively, Shh. we could try to sneak up on it. Sure. I could use my five pence Macron to, uh, to, you know, mimic its, uh, its language so that it understands me. Okay. Um... What do you think? Sneak up or try to restrain it? I think I'm gonna, I, could just... I think it's best if I take a shot from a distance. I I bet I can pop it from here. Or you could try to talk to it first and then just like have the shot ready to go if it comes at us. We could try that. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll pull out my uh wooden five pence and macron. And uh use it to speak with this animal oh okay which uh what spell are you casting here speak with animals that makes sense yeah that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> uh all right go ahead and roll a um d20 for me just to make sure this thing doesn't malfunction all right that's a five okay you are right you are all right okay um uh, all right you cast speak with animals uh, what do you try to say? All right, so I'm going to say, hey, buddy, uh, not trying to spook you here, but uh, we're kind of trying to save the jungle and this whole area, you know, trying to keep a good habitat for you. You know, I know you like to eat the things around here. Don't like, you know, things being underwater. Don't like all these hunters around. What do you say? Maybe give us a ride to that crash over yonder to the tank uh, where that ta where that big metal clunky thing fell alright go ahead and give me a persuasion check and I will say this is going to be very difficult because this thing yeah. is wicked dumb sure 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 alright for persu persuasion I get a plus six alright okay. 
That is one of the things that I'm good at. All right, so that is a 17. Okay, unfortunately, even with the 17... <laughs> uh, actually, no, the DC... Yeah, no, even with the 17, this thing just goes... <clears throat> huh? <laughs> I don't I don't think it's it's working. Maybe you can shoot it now. Cocks its head at you. No, just tell it what? I'm gonna shoot it if, if Oh hey, okay. Second second thing. We're gonna capture you and ride you. What? Alright, I think we just do it. He doesn't seem like he he gets it. Maybe I'm not a uh, maybe it's a, a dialect thing or you know. <laughs> And I, I, as I'm talking to it, I'm going to, like, slowly take some steps forward, cautiously. We're friends. We're not going to harm you. Shoot him. Shoot him. <clears throat> um, can I use my favorite enemy beasts to recall what these things eat or perhaps what they like? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know these things are... Generally herbivores. Let me see, actually, I have the bestiary here. That's it. There we go. Uh, you know it to actually largely be a scavenger. Uh, you would know this, that it eats a lot of uh, abandoned corpses and such things. Corpses. Oh. Uh, you know, of, uh, you know, mostly beasts and everything. Um, you would know what the what the humans say about it. Uh, they usually say that it's about you know one part hyena, one part sub-Saharan warthog, and ten parts piss drunk football hooligan who's taken a blow to the cranium while falling down the stairs. So, big old stupid beast. Um. Well, I have fifteen rations of pet food. Can I see if it will eat it? Absolutely. Uh, go ahead and give me an animal handling check. Now... Okay, that doesn't have favored enemy. Animal handling should just be a regular... Uh, let's... Let me see. His favorite enemy is only for tracking and recalling information, so it should just be... That's going to be a 12, I guess? 12. Okay, it does not approach you. It seems to be... Um... And they start kind of hooting to each other. These three fussicks start kind of like growling and hooting in this kind of weird chaotic unison. They start to kind of sync up. Um, so I have a spear. Can I put the pet food on the end of the spear by poking it and like putting it in its mouth area? <laughs> uh, with that insane idea, I will allow you to roll another uh, animal handling check. <laughs> Eat the food. <laughs> oh, that's even worse. That's a that's a five. Uh, yeah, these things. Uh, they they see the spear and they don't know a lot, but they understand that. Uh, and they freak out on you. Uh, go ahead and roll initiative as these things attack you guys. Hell yeah. Uh, okay, so that is a fourteen for me. Right, and if you, uh, Paul, if you could switch the track over, if we have that uh, battle music, that'd be awesome. <laughs> What did you say, Paul? What was yours? 14. 14. Okay. Uh, it's a 6 for use of... Okay. Uh, what did you get, Rose? 16. 16. Okay. Nice. Okay. Man, I don't want to kill animals. <laughs> but I'll do it. Well... <laughs> but, but I will. <laughs> I've got this... Uh, for my friends. Capacitronic Caveret Coder that allows me to cast a fog cloud, we could use it to try to escape. If you wanted so was, to avoid fighting the... Let me get it real I mean, quick. It's not, that big. it's not that... Yeah, go ahead. So you had a 16, and then what did the other two have? Sorry? I had a 14. Okay. I had a 6. 6 for me. Gotcha. All right, sorry. Go ahead, Paul, with what you're saying. Oh, I was just conversing with the party here, saying that I've got this uh, fog cloud generator. We could use it to create a fog cloud and see if we can run away. Maybe they'll get lost. They seem pretty dumb, so... Yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't care that much about whether or not I kill them. It's just a preference for vengeance. Mm. 
So preference for vengeance. They didn't do anything to us, so. No, I mean they're just animals. We we could just see if we could escape. I mean we could kill them, but I think it's a good use that way we don't have to actually fight them. You know, save yeah, HP I and stuff. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and and we've got better things to do. We don't want to delay too much. <laughs> we got people who are already ahead of us. Yeah, that's true. So okay, we'll and maybe if we leave them alive, they'll kill some of those dicks. And then we could ride them on the way back if yeah. we don't get the tank. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They won't remember. They won't remember. All right. I don't remember. Uh, well, they are dumb okay. enough that they clearly telegraphed that they were going to attack you. Uh, Vengeance, you are up first, followed by Zemo. Uh, I hold an action. Okay, cool. Uh, Zemo. Yeah. All right, I'm going to use my fog cloud generator. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll a d20. I think you're ahead of me. Six, so it does Six. not malfunction. You are fine. And right. you generate a fog cloud in the area around these fussocks. So I'm just going to crank my fog machine here and or whatever. You crank the fog machine and it, 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 you know, nothing really happens. And then just a shocking amount of fog just billows out of it um, surrounding the fussocks. Okay. All right. Um, now let's else you run, a, let's run. run away and I'm going <laughs> to run away. <laughs> Yeah, these guys are canonically stupid enough that if you guys create this fog clown around them and then bail, you will just hear you just hear in the background these things clearly just headbutting each other and general <laughs> sounds of confusion and hooting as you as you scamper away into the marshland. As I'm running, I yell back at uh, uh, Yusef, "What are they saying?" They're saying the the heroes are bravely running away. Uh, what you do hear is just ow. <laughs> Ow, what? Ow. <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> Ow, why? They are so enamored by our nobility. Write that down now. I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down. <laughs> he's writing as he's running. Okay. Um, I think what we're going to do here is... I think let's do a... Oh, what would this be? I think this is just going to be a straight up luck roll from the three of you to see if the if Israel and her band were able to call off the damn attack. Mm. Oh, shit. So mm. I, oh my God, let me see. The persuasion check was terrible. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to set a DC of 12. All right, who's got the lucky feet? And I think let's have let's just have all three of you do this, and we'll we'll just count success. So we need two successes. Ooh. Just straight d twenty roll. Just straight d twenties. Fifteen. One. Eleven. Ah, that's a fail. Close. Comes down to Rosie. Come just on, a straight d twenty roll, just Rosie. Just straight twenty. Just roll. Get it. I got did. this. I'm oh. just checking. Thirteen. You had nothing. Hey. It's just it. Oh, that's it. Twelve. Twelve. Whoa. Oh. I'll tie, that's it. tie goes to the runner. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> we did By it! Thinnest, We're margin. heroes! Wow. We saved the dam! <laughs> By the thinnest it margin It was a persuasion! <laughs> That's what did it. You, um... <laughs> with the thinnest margin possible, uh, it's a little... You don't you, you don't hear anything. Um, we didn't do anything, either. You hear the, <laughs> well, you hear the sound of the dam not exploding. Um, uh -huh. Oh, hey, and, <laughs> Hey, Dolma. Uh, not right now. <laughs> uh, you hear the sound of the dam not exploding. You can't really tell, but you get the sense. You just kind of feel in your bones, based on what, uh, based on what Israel had described for you. Um, you do not hear an explosion, and time goes on as you travel, and you do not hear an explosion, and you start to feel a sense of relief. Nice. We did absolutely nothing, but we saved the day. We did it, though. Like nice we shot. did. It, it was, was all, all us. It was all. It was all you. Yeah, it was yeah. all you. If you hadn't done that. Israel may be dead, and then that, you know, we stopped Israel. We stopped uh, Rizik from killing Israel, maybe, or at you, least prevented that violence. You definitely directed Rizik's attention more Rizk. towards you guys and yeah. freed up Israel. So uh, that is fairly successful. All right. You guys continue onwards into the marshland with the, uh, as the sound of the Fussocks headbutting each other fade into the background. And you find. Go ahead and give me another um... survival. Yeah, please. Um, now I was not doing this before, but my natural explorer. I'm in the jungle, so my proficiency is doubled for in here, right? Damn. Yeah. 
All right, so actually, my that's uh, twenty four. Twenty four. Just ridiculous. Yep. Twenty four. I told God. you I knew this jungle, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing this jungle, you might even expect this. You see up ahead, um, you spot quickly through the marsh. Uh, you spot um, a group of about twenty Venusians uh, armed with spears, uh, and they seem to be kind of milling about. Um, I know these the guys. Do I know these guys? I'll say with a 24, I will say you know these guys. These guys are, um, they are members of a socialist collective that live on a floating factory base on the lake. Uh, and they seek true wealth distribution among <laughs> everyone. You know It's a bunch of commies. It's a bunch <laughs> of fucking commies. Um, <laughs> You know, you might not remember it because it's annoying, but you know that they would prefer the term intergalactic inclusive people's oppositional proletariat. Oh, Jesus. I don't even want to deal with these guys, man. <laughs> you also know that if you if you encounter them, they are going to perform a wealth audit on you. And oh, no. if they find that you are wealthier than them, they will demand money until it's equal. If they find that you are poorer than them, then they will compensate you until you are equal and send you on your way. Oh, oh shit. Geez. Hold on. What if we... No, no. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No. Nope. Nope. Not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. Let's bury all of our shit. Yeah, nope. that's what I'm saying. See, oh. we just we we leave our stuff we, here and be like We don't got time to bury stuff. Oh, I mean, yeah, we you're could right. like dump it. No. We could dump it, but we don't have time to bury it. You what if we convince them that we need a boat? Oh, and wealth includes boats. Yes. If they have a boat, they have more wealth than we do. Yes, but we'll have to convince them of that because they're commies. We could leave all of our stuff with Yusuf. Tell them we we don't have anything at all and we need a boat. yusuf They gone. said they're going to do yeah. a wealth audit. Oh, an audit? Is yeah. that like electronic or? I don't know. I've, oh, I've never dealt with these people. You, you're the you're the expert. You know these people. Um, how well do I know these people? What, what is this it's like audit probably entail? not super well in that you're probably not friends with them uh but you have you have heard stories of them just kind of insisting on frisking people and being kind of nuisances okay. there's there's no sort of um they don't have the technology to like check your you know financials or anything actually you know fierce? what what if we what okay for, forget these guys i just remembered that i have an inflatable tent that fits three people if it inflates it floats we can float across Ooh. the river all we need is oars. All we need is oars. Or I, a, a rocket launcher to propel us. Some kind that of... That seems like overkill. I don't know what... If you've been talking the VFF too long, that does you do not need a rocket launcher to move a boat. I have an electric torch. That... No, Great that idea. Ain't, that ain't it either. And a water skin. I could, like, fill it with air and... I think we have a lot to to work with. <laughs> Yeah, or you know, I could do another survival check. There's like wood in this jungle, right? We can get a flat stick, right? Yeah, it's it's very foreign. Uh, well, actually, it's it's perfectly at home for you. Uh, it's it's a lot of strange like pinks and green floor, all sorts of weird kind like of maybe like a big thing. leaf, you know? Like, Absolutely. There's all sorts. There's all sorts of shit. It's a very lush jungle. Yeah. All right. So I'm more of the opinion that we don't mess with these commies because I don't feel like having a wealth audit right now because I have a tent yeah. and they might not have a tent and I don't want to lose my tent. Yeah. See, I, I was thinking about just giving a coin to each of them and they would like the idea of you know equal distribution of wealth but then he said wealth audit mm. and i feel like they wouldn't just be happy with a coin each mm. if, they audited, if, they, if they audited me yeah i don't want to lose my weapons or any of my destro xulonic plausive force destabilizers i don't want to lose my buckets of pounds that i have on me how or many pounds do you have magazine wait a minute hold on how many pounds do you have i only got 68 pounds maybe i don't should give worry you a about audit. it don't worry about it. Listen, just because I get paid for my services doesn't mean that, you know, I have, I have a... a Sounds you know, like a bourgeoisie to me. Uh, I have an in Maybe vogue, we should... you know. People like stories. <clears throat> All right. Let's, let's float across the lake in this, <laughs> in this shit, tent. Yusuf. So we have to get around them? <laughs> shh, don't... Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's let, let's go this way. So, um, can I look for a leaf of some kind that would work as a paddle? 
Yeah, absolutely. And with your, I'll let you that twenty-four survival roll. Uh, oh, so you can let it ride. Yeah, let it ride. You can you can skirt the, with that. You can skirt these guys no problem. You just hear their their complainings and a lot of people just saying, "Oh, have you read theory?" And the guy saying, "Oh, have I read theory?" Um, <laughs> and you continue alongwards around them. Uh, I should plug and say we're releasing. There's multiple. This quick start that we're playing off of now is just the beginning. We're we're sending. We're posting like additional installments of this with different ways you can go about this uh, this quest. Make sure to buy so the Marxist expansion. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> check, check out check out the caravanning, boating, and jungle trekking adventure path uh, to be released in June on the Crowbar Creative Patreon. There you go. All right. Shameless plug. Hey. Uh, no shame. Uh, you are able to find uh, some, you know, uh, some flat leaves um, or like fungi, large fungi uh, of that could be, you know, used for scooping and propelling. Okay, great. Um, how do I inflate this tent? Is it like, uh, like, is it self-inflatable or do I got to blow into it or? Uh, so it's kind of up to you. Um. Let's let the let's let the rich boy do it. Well, yeah, I, I've been told I'm full of hot air. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll start blowing up this tent. Okay. V, VP and I are gonna talk about the um, pros and cons of wealth distribution while he's over there, huffing and puffing. <laughs> oh, good. I'm not afraid to work for my for my keep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you guys notice while, while uh, Yusuf is blowing up the um, the uh, the tent. Uh, ironically, you've been able to notice that that scenic airship that you saw in the sky has been like slowly puttering across the lake. It's kind of gotten more towards the um, towards the smoke at this point. You see it. You you notice it just fucking explodes. Um, <laughs> and this you can see. It's hard to see from a distance, but you can see some giant creature like falls out of it uh, and lands in the jungle somewhere over there. There is uh, a lot of chaos going on today. Well, that Jesus. was interesting. Um, if we didn't have a tank to get, I would want to check that out because <clears throat> it's been a while since I had some big game done. Might be in a future release. Check the Patreon. Uh, <laughs> Stay tuned. Back to Kickstarter. <laughs> Another fucking plug. Um, you are able to inflate your tent. As you get close to the water, uh, you've noticed this before, but as you're really starting to think about crossing it, uh, essentially you're up very close in the in the northeast i can post the actual let me see if i have it i might not have it easily accessible if you have the uh actually let me see no sorry one moment Uh, uh, it is in the uh, quick start if you have it, but I did mm -hmm. not bring it. There is a map uh, of generally what you're looking at in the um, on page uh, 34. 34, okay. <clears throat> mm, okay, okay. <clears throat> Uh, so you're moving along the edge through the marshland. You've basically gotten to in the northeast. There's the river that comes in that feeds um, th what is now this lake. Um, you can see above you to the northeast, uh, some ways off, there is this large rail railroad bridge that passes across. Uh, you can see that as you prepare to cross the river. Mm -hmm. And you are using a, uh, it's a tent that you're using to cross the river? Inflatable tent. It tents. is. It's Inflatable a, uh, a boat. And okay. I did get a picture to upload for this, so. Oh, thank you. Yep, I was able to pull it out of the quick start document. Thank you, faster than I am, appreciate it. Available right now on crowbarcreative.com. <laughs> thank you. Of the inflatable tent? What about the inflatable tent? Oh. You have a picture of the inflatable tent? No, I have a picture of the map that he was oh, talking about nice, on page 34. Nice. And in fact, yes, I will drop yes, it in the yes. Discord for you all, too. So give me Perfect, thanks. There you go. That was not what I wanted to do. There we go. 
you should have nice that. awesome thank you paul oh nice map yeah that's one one of the skills that i need to brush up on is my map skills mm -hmm. you don't have a, a you know a graphics department at your newspaper <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> no they leave all the cartography to yusuf drawing sketches all right uh, so if you're going to use just a, a tent to try to cross this uh, acidic oh, lake, it's you not can... just a tent. Okay, mm. it's go on. It's an it's a Doctor Gordbort's uh, inflatable adventure tent with uh, color acid acid uh, resistance. A acid, Is that what I heard? <laughs> uh, it, it comes with tums in for acid <laughs> reflux. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> Let's have two of you. Um, let's have you make dexterity checks to see how well you. Uh, this fucking thing is gonna from. evaporate, and we're all gonna. Oh, sink. I'm not paddling it. I blew it up. I'm not paddling it. I'll paddle. I'll paddle. I'm the ranger. Hey, I paddle. paddle. What okay. am I? What am I doing? I got here? standards. Uh, just a dexterity check. So roll a d20 and add your dexterity modifier. Oh, that's not good. That. Did is, you say two of us? That is yeah, five. That, that is five okay. for me. Nice. Yeah, not ideal. You love to see it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, What'd you get, Rosie? That's a um, nine. Nine. Okay. Oh. Uh, th those are two failures. You're making your way slowly across the uh, the this this river area. You are uh, you're splashing a lot in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Each of you, with with both of you failing. Can uh, I purposely you're... try to get it on Yusuf? <laughs> For not paddling. Sure. Rude. You, you, all get it. you, uh, you, Rude. Each you each take four points of acid damage. No. Uh, as you splash the shit into the into the tent. Yikes. Uh, we'll see. That gets you not very well. Uh, let's go. Let's get another round as you try to make your way across. It's about a forty foot wide crossing, and it's just it's really sad so far. All right. Well, that's a seven for me. So hopefully, I'm getting these bad rolls out of the way before a big encounter here. <laughs> 13? 13. Okay, 13 is a success. Uh, you're going to move further. Uh, you move a little bit further. You mentioned compensate for this. You are going to take a little more damage, but... Oh, Jesus, well, okay. Well, I can, I can suck it up and use one of my bonus actions. Oh, to, like, compensate? Well, to regain hit points. But oh, I okay, guess yes, that... you get... Yeah. You, you can do that later if you want, but... Um, yeah, no, that's not... not I'm not going to do that. Uh, yeah. you, you guys each take four points of acid damage again as more splashing goes on. Um, as Zemo, uh, famed hunter of the jungle, is just cannot get purchased in this, in this <laughs> ac acidic water. <laughs> guys, I don't like this. Can we uh, can we less on the acid? Too much splashing. Um, I'm sorry. Did we take more damage? I was reading my uh, four. Yes. Okay. Uh, Yusuf, why don't we you can do this. why don't you just write about the hardships in your <laughs> friendship journal and you know it'll it'll just make the story all that much better. That's great. That's a great suggestion. Sorry, I lost track of where I'm at. Think about the greater the bigger picture here, okay? That's right. Without without obstacles, there's nothing for the heroes yeah, to, to overcome. It's the one brave of, heroes exp explore. It's one of wastes. It's the old cross acidic. Uh, lake. Yes. See, it's it's one of the oldest tales known to man. There's man versus nature, okay? Yeah, that's okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the old man in the sea. You ever read that book, Back on Earth? There's also one of these, like, cautionary tales where if you, you fuck with the, the lake too much, mm -hmm. it becomes acidic and fucks you back. Yeah. it's. I mean, that might have something to do with, you know, unchecked capitalism, too. But, yeah, you know, that's fine. Yeah, but, you sound like those commies. I, yeah, right? Um, but, you know, Old Man in the Sea, Moby Dick, you know, traditional stories about a guy who hates a fish. I mean... I've seen that film. Moby Dick? When was Moby Dick written? Like, it was Herman Melville 19, wrote it. 1922? It 1940s, I think? That's a good I don't know. question. That's anyway. a good question. Oh, actually, that's a good point, because it's 1922 right now. Maybe it has oh, that's 18, 1851. Okay, All right. Moby Dick oh, cannot, yeah, okay, cannot, there you go. Okay, there we go. Has, is, yeah, has happened. But the old man in the nice. sea has not, because that was Hemingway, and he was yes. later than 1920s. So, yes. Hemingway is, Hemingway is yet to come, and let's be honest, in this world, Hemingway is probably going to be pretty fucked up. I mean, I mean, he, he already, already was pretty That's an extremely good point. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I take that one back and think about. <laughs> but Herman about Melville did lines. exist. Okay, so there we go. Herman Mel- Melville lived. Uh, <laughs> All right. So I um, also have to go out of character to say referring to a journalist's like notebook as their as their feelings journal is <laughs> amazingly <laughs> dismissive, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get one last uh, round between the two of you of dexterity checks as you're trying to just get this fucking tent across this river. <laughs> I'm gonna. Use, uh, that's uh... a thirteen that time for me. Ooh, okay, that's okay, no, good. Oh, I'm sorry. Hell I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. It's a twelve, not a thirteen. I think 12. you need a twelve. Okay, These are two I got it. successful yes. checks. Woo! You both push yourselves across successfully. As you do so, as well, um, you notice up. It's a it's a ways off to the northeast. Uh, you can see this railroad bridge. You actually, as you're pushing yourself across, you see um, a train ch- 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 chugging along the bridge. Why and as you're take kind the of fucking train, we should have just taken the train. What are we doing? Uh, you can see it's got like military regalia and stuff on it. Um, BCEF military regalia. As you reach the bank and you look over, uh, you, your attention is drawn by an explosion at the edge of the rail of, of the bridge. The bridge stands, but you can see a firefight is going on up there. That's why we didn't take the train. Okay. Yeah, and remember uh, that guy whose name I've already forgotten how to pronounce. I know his name. Yisrael was the chick, and then nope, Rigget not her. Was the dick. The Krasik, Krasik, Kr- uh, Riznik. Riznik. Yeah, I'm gonna call impressive. him Chris Dick because he's, you know, kind of, well, he, yeah, he's kind of a dick. So Riz Dick, he's kind of a dick. So I'm gonna yeah. call him Chris Dick at yeah, this Riz from dick, now. Yeah. All right. uh, he did say that we wouldn't have to worry about who owned that bridge because things were gonna pop off. So that seems like it's happening now. I so maybe was, he's there and we hmm. can beat. Uh, maybe we can beat him to the tank still. That's a good point. But he did. But maybe he wasn't going there and he already had other operatives there. Let's find we out. We still have to hustle. Paddle faster. And I will again say, <laughs> please stay tuned this month for the hyper railing and jungle trekking <laughs> supplement to the quick start available on Crowbar Creative. Uh, there you go. Uh, all right. And as you reach the far bank, um, this might be a good place to take like a five or ten minute break before we get into the end of this. How's that sound? All right. Welcome back. So you guys have just uh, managed to, with some difficulty uh, across this little river, uh, across this acidic river with this acidic lake. Uh, Zemo, you also surmise uh, through the crossing and surveying the landscape from the from the lake and the river. Um, a lot of this acidity, maybe a little bit of, of it is uh, natural. Some of it seems to be coming from the uh, mining operations out in the mountains to the, north, to the northwest. Um, but you manage to get across this, you notice some sort of explosion and firefight happening off way above you and off on the northeast uh, across this railway bridge. Uh, but you guys have gotten pretty close, it seems. You can see the smoke trail from this crash site uh, pre- not so far off. Um, you guys make your way towards that uh, towards that destination? Let's get him. All right. Let's get, uh, let's get one more survival check then for me. Am I still in the jungle? Uh, yes, you are actually, I'll say you're moving back to the jungle now, yes. Ooh, my best one yet. This is a 26. Yeah, you are going to have the drop on this. Uh, go, go ahead and roll a d12 for me. Five. Do we already have a five? five? Uh, do we want to do a different one? No, you do not actually. Oh, okay. Uh, or at least not on this table. Um, Ooh, we got a new table. This is the blood jungle encounter table. Uh, okay. And while you move up, also, you notice this um, from the southeast. Uh, Zemo and Yusef notice this. Uh, vengeance, your passive perception is terrible, so you're just really focused on the, the task at hand. You guys notice this rocket take off from far to the southeast and just... <laughs> and just not long after, it's, it's booking crash somewhere north of you, kind of near the tank site. But in the meantime, as you make your way through the jungle, uh, you spot a group of prey. Go ahead and roll a d6 for me, actually. Three. Three. You spot more fussocks. You spot more Milton's drunken fussocks. Uh, these you are spot the, six of them this time. These the dumb as shit the ones. The dumb shit, yeah, yeah all right. Mm-hmm. Um, and Pete. Now, with your, I will say, with yeah, we're your, close this time, right? We could try to. You are close this time. You're, you you notice them from a little ways off. 
You also notice that they are, or at least many of them, are wounded. And they seem to be kind mm. of loping along, not looking too great. You also notice with that insane... Um, with that insane survival check, you notice that they are being stalked. By... Um, by creatures that you know, humans call them husky-throated gripes. Mm. These are much larger beasts. They look roughly like this. Um, very lar long necks with these creepy, like, grasping uh, mandibles husky. at the end. Very, very husky, husky throats. Very husky throats. <laughs> um, you know these it's the best kind of throat. <laughs> husky. All right. <laughs> um, you know these to be... Referring here. These are omnivores. Um, you know, they sometimes uh, just eat. You know, they sometimes scavenge, but they also sometimes hunt. Mm. Um, you know them to be a bit dangerous. Uh, you do know, though, with that survival check, I'll say, you know these gripes because you know that they can, if you have their hide, someone can spend some time with their hide to craft it into clothing that makes you just much more appealing. Uh, mechanically, it gives you a plus one to your charisma score. Would this be the type of rare animal hides I have, currently have five of? Uh, these, I think it could be. Yeah, roll, roll a d20 for me. Let's see. Uh, that would be a one. You have the ugly. Want want. <laughs> I really wish you'd used that one on a on an attack. Yeah right. Yeah. I'm really, I'm I want really looking for some of these malfunctions. Yeah for sure. Yeah. Um, Just start fighting. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I'm gonna point this out to the party while I munch on one of my Hughes healthful hops to heal back some HP. It's gonna be four. Oh, and yeah. four plus, so that's max back, Wait. so that's going to be ten back. Oh. Y'all got snacks? I have a snack, yeah. <laughs> I have cigarettes. They're in my equipment. <laughs> I like, <laughs> listen, uh, I'll I mean, give you, I'll give you pounds, uh, let's say pence. I'll give you pen, <laughs> pence for cigarettes or snacks. You got a Lucy, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, you, got, you got a spare? Um, I mean, you are a newsie, so shouldn't you be chain smoking anyway? Yeah, you can have. I some got a things. pipe. I got a pipe. Here, take some. Um, I also have rations. I mean, if you want snacks, and I'm gonna just suck it up by just hitting myself a little bit to uh, get back in the zone. Get back in the zone. All right. Get um, myself some HP. There you go. All right. Ten. Um, um, I, I would like to look more attractive. Let's fuck these things up. You want to kill one of these things? Yeah, I, w I would like a very dapper hat or knapsack or um, kerchief. All right, well, um, I'm going to use an ensnaring strike on one of them then oh. uh, to catch capture you one. And that way you can skin it alive. Because oh. that that's the best way to get hides off of these things. Because I'm a nature no! boy. I'm, I'm a nature boy, and and that's what I'm telling you. Oh. All right, I'll so just shoot it then. Do you really do you really want to get involved in this? Just, do do you want this to be a part of you? I mean, I told you I want to wear their skins to make myself look more appealing. <laughs> <laughs> what what part of that did you not understand? <clears throat> oh, that's pretty dark. All right. Um. So do we want to? Brilla Devilling over here. Do we have time to fight these things? I mean, we got to get to that tank, man. And then we Oh, can... that's a great that's a good point. We've got priorities. We'll come back for them. Yeah, and then we can run over as many of these things as you want and then you can have all the skin that you That'll please. ruin the skins. <laughs> <laughs> so much. That's like when you like I need pristine skins and then you run over the tank and you're like, "Does this look pristine to you?" Well, first you need to cut a hole in your floor and then you need a pulley with a bucket and then We'll figure it out later. We'll figure it out later. <laughs> Let's go to the tank. All right. So do you want to fight these things, uh, VP, or are we good avoiding these guys again? No, I don't want to. I don't. I would, yeah, to the tank. To the tank. All right. You skirt the, um, you skirt this group of beasts, leaving the, um, leaving the wounded uh, fussocks to their fate as they are stalked by these gripes. 
They're so um, dumb, they probably won't even know that they're being eaten by those things. It's fine. <laughs> you leave them behind you. Yes, you sit dark. <clears throat> As you make your way through, all right. Let's get one last survival check as the as the plume of of uh, of wreckage is, is getting closer. All right, Nat twenty is the only one that I haven't done yet. Let's see it. Ah, damn it, twenty six. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> no problem. You. Oh move wait, through. no. I'm sorry. Twenty five. Uh, okay, never mind. They spot you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My math is so bad at these high levels, man. Eighteen plus seven. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> That's that's high level math there. Um, I, I mean, I failed algebra, so you move through. So from this, you manage to get to the edge of um, a little bit of a clearing, and let's go ahead and get a. Um, which you can spot immediately. You can see the tank site, and you can see some movement around it. Uh, are you guys trying to approach stealthily, or just brazenly, or what are you trying to do? You want me to drop the uh, tank image down? Yes, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, well, what do I see, first of all, with my elven, I mean, uh, Venusian eyes? Uh, give me a perception check with advantage, because if you're a great survival. Uh, yes, perception is plus five. Now, that's a wisdom, so am I still in the jungle, so I get a uh, double yeah. proficiency bonus? Yeah, I th yes, think you do, yes. All right, so advantage. Where's my other d20? There you are. It's going to be like another 27 or something. Ah, oh, fuck. I rolled a six and a five. So that is uh, a 13, unfortunately. Okay. You see movement. Um, you So what you see is a... This scene here. You see this tank. It is massive. It is intimidating. Let me see. I can drop a picture in here if I can figure out how to get this to Hmm. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to drop a picture of the tank into here. You putting it in the Discord? Yeah. There it is. There we go. Oh, nice. And I will get this into... Oh, yeah, that looks like trouble. It's pretty scary stuff. Um, of course. So you can see uh, in this, this you can see like this, you can see the the uh, line across the ground, like this mark, uh, the skid mark as to like the dirt and the jungle and the rocks have been torn up as this tank slammed through the ground and skidded to a halt. There's a bit of a rise of earth, earth and rock and flora at the end, kind of built up around this tank. Uh, it is currently not operational. Does not appear to be operational. Uh, with a 13, you can see some movement around it. Uh, from this far back in the jungle, for you to be safely unobserved, um, you can't tell who it is. If you if you want to get a better look, you're going to have to like sneak up closer. I mean, I don't really care who it is. If I can see <clears throat> ahead, I, I think I should take a shot at it. At the tank itself? No, like, um... At a person? Yeah, I mean, nobody there is good, right? Because our buddies are gonna stop the dam. So everybody here should be a bad guy. Smoke him. Smoke him? Smoke him if you got him. What do you think, yeah. VP? Yeah, go for it. All right, so I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna take pot shots up here. How about you guys rush in and do kind of... Melee. Oh. Or maybe VP rushes in and I cover you, and uh -huh. then and then Newsy Boy writes down uh -huh. stuff in his feelings journal. Mid <laughs> mid <laughs> mid range. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. I'm a war reporter now. I would like to <laughs> use my bonus action to first of all get some tunage going. Uh. There, uh, I want to use my bonus action to use my aether or ether distortion receptor, uh, which casts Hunter's Mark on the f the person or thing I see. There's a number. Of, there's a number of cre creatures around there. Uh, but yeah, so you can cast Hunter's Mark on one of them. Yep, and I rolled a 15, so it does not malfunction. Great. And then I want to use my secondhand Earth Elite Forces GG33 sniper rifle to 
shoot it in the face. Awesome. Okay, this is going to be a surprise round. I also just dropped the uh, information about the operation of the tank into the um, into the Discord in case that comes up. Uh, oh, so for a surprise round, come up. go ahead and um, roll a d10 for me <laughs> to see there's me this or some oh. you. There's a number of targets out there, so let's roll a d10 just to see who you're shooting at, basically. S nine. Nine. Okay, close. But you see. It, oh, it I'm sorry. Like That's a six. I had it upside down. Okay, cool. Or wait, did um, I? I don't know. Does it matter which is which? No, it doesn't actually. You need a, a ten would have been different, but okay. Um, you okay? You fire at a grunt. This is the surprise round. Uh, go ahead and roll your attack with advantage. Did you already do that? I have not yet. Okay. Uh, sixteen plus six is uh, twenty-two. That absolutely hits. Now, remind me on Hunter's Mark, what it, what that does? Uh, that, I believe, gives you an additional 1d8 damage, but let me double check that real quick. Is it 1d8 or 1d6 or 1d4? Yeah, here we go. Uh, d6, actually. Yeah, you're right. D6, okay. Um, so 2d10 plus 2 plus 6. Ah! People sleep on rangers. Ow. Yeah. Ow. Ow. Ouch. Okay. Got it. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's a two plus five. That's seven plus three is ten. Plus two is twelve damage. Twelve damage. Okay. This guy looks hurt suddenly. Uh, you, you're shot out of nowhere. Right in Wings the face. Him and he goes, right in the face. Right in the face. <laughs> Half his face is like wounded. He is he is alive. If he didn't have uh, tentacles ahead. before, he does now. <laughs> let's roll initiative. Um, I also want to use my adolescent Barnaby's thrust and tell it to um, provide support to VP as she moves closer into melee range. Okay, you send your pet along with them. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, let's get initiative. Uh, dirty twenty. Nice. Dirty twenty. Jesus. Twelve. <laughs> uh, who has the higher dex between you two? Uh, my dex is three. Mine is three. Uh, okay. Roll Calm off. Down, <laughs> it's a roll off. Uh, They're just flexing over here. You should let me go first, uh, so I can use my sniper shots to get people out of your way, so you can keep moving forward. Sure. Or do you want to? Or do you want us to roll off, uh, Grackle? Fine. Okay. Do we see like if if this who the people were? Uh, yeah, we'll do that now as we open this up. One second. Uh, so first off is going to be Zemo, and then Vengeance. And what did Yusuf get again? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so as you guys, as uh, Zemo provides covering fire and vengeance and Yusef move in closer, uh, Yusef and, and vengeance and your pet, excuse me, move in closer. Vengeance and Yusef, you recognize, uh, especially Yusef, because you're very observant. Uh, you recognize as you get closer into this clearing, uh, a group of Venusians around this tank and on top of it, attempting to op uh, get it operational is Rizgik. And at that shot, one of his one of his gorillas has been wounded and he sees you and he says, ah, good. I always thought it would end this way. <laughs> and raises his rifle. Uh, Zemo, that is top of the round, that is you. Um, point of order, uh, I want my pet to be named James. Okay. It just, is so named. All right, perfect. <laughs> um, I thought it would be... Okay, so... Um, Uh, I'm going to shoot the guy that's hunter, Hunter's Marked right now. Okay. Now, does that give me a bonus to my attack roll as well? I forget. I think so. Well, let me double check. Uh, no. No? No, just additional damage. Uh, that's a 17 to hit. That hits. All right. Uh, much better. That's a... Twenty. 
damage. Poofa doofa. This is the guy that you had already damaged. Yep. You did, I believe it was 12 to him already? Yes. Uh, yeah, he fucking dies. <laughs> um, you, you, you took off, like, part of his face, and he's kind of swallowed. And you get him again, you take off the other part of his face, and this guy just crumbles to the ground, dead. Right on. Damn. Oh, shit. Oh, never mind. I thought my fighting style hadn't been applied yet, but it says it's been applied already. Never mind. Yeah, all the, you shouldn't have to do any math really in your sheets. It should all be baked into the character. I got excited. I was like, oh, I should be adding two to that, but I, I see it now. Uh, it, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, bonus action to move my hunter's mark to, um, are any very close to VP and, uh, James and, uh, Yusuf? Yeah, there's like, uh, three or four of them that are kind of more on the perimeter. That'd be closer to them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move it to any that are in... No, I'm gonna put it on. Um, I'm gonna put it on. Uh, on Rizgit. Ooh. Okay. What'd you put on him? Uh, Hunter's mark. So you kind of zero in on him. Rizgit feels your attention on him. Mm -hmm. Kind of bristles at it. Um, Maybe I can draw his fire from you guys or something. Okay. All right. That was Zemo's turn. Up next is Vengeance. Am I within range of Riznik? Uh, you can get into range. Yeah, you can run into range with him. All right. Yeah, I'm going there. And I'm going to take out my Pompson 6,000 uh, gun thing. Yeah. And uh, attack. So I I roll once to check if it malfunctions. Is that uh, right? No, it's just, it's just the same roll. For this. Oh, all right. So that, that's a seven, uh, plus eight to attack. Okay, on a freeze kick? Yeah. Uh, so a 15? Yeah. Yeah, seven plus eight, yeah. Riz kick just barely sees you and you can see him kind of faint and he gets out of the way of your shot. Just barely misses him. Um, can I do an a, um, adrenal squeeze to get a second action? It's Absolutely. It's one of my belligerent features. Absolutely. Yes, you can. All right. Um, I try again. Okay, do it. Twenty-two. Absolutely hits. Yes. All right. Um, and I'm going to use one of my superiority die to do a goading attack. So that will be. Oh, nice. Um, I don't know yet. Okay. Uh, so you get to add a, you get to add a d8 to your damage. Yeah. Okay. And then Got he it. is goaded, so he's gonna yeah he's gonna have disadvantage on others. Nice. That's fifteen points of damage. Fifteen points of damage. Jeez. Okay. With my yeah with this added nice hit all right solid hit vengeance charges in you're kind of soft <laughs> there it is it's the soft one's back all right um that is vengeance's turn that brings up the gorillas they are going to they kind of scramble into position and start taking shots at you guys um say three take shots at actually i guess most of you are here so three of them are going to take shots at uh at Vengeance? Yeah. Oh shit. Is my pet drawing any fire? Uh, it... Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, it'll draw, it'll draw at least one attack. Good point. Um, okay, that's one hit, one miss, and one malfunction. Uh, so let's adjudicate the hit real quick. <laughs> um, deals. Oh, right. Nice. What? Okay, 11 points of piercing damage. This guy gets a Ooh. shot off, really hits you. Um, one goes wide, and then one, I'm going to roll on the... Er. Hey, Rosie, do you want to roll this? Because this guy's shooting at you, that could be fun. Uh, go ahead and roll a... 
Uh, D20 for me. Shit. It's a 16. Oh, that's good. I mean, this is bad for him, so higher number is actually oh. really good for you. Uh, there we go. Okay, you got a 16. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Electro... Oh. Electrolocutionation. His entire <laughs> weapon is electrified. He takes... Oh, fuck me. He takes Get 84 fucked. lightning damage and is stunned for... 8d4, 8d4. Oh, I was, well, it's mainly Still 54. <laughs> it could be. Oh, my God. Ugh, okay, 5. That's 32, actually. Eight, Gotta be here for a second. <laughs> five. Oh, my God. Max there. 8, 13. Oh, these are good. Uh, 13, 18. Is this uh, Ristit? Uh, no, this is one of his gorillas. Ah. What was the last number I said? 18? Uh, 7. Jesus Christ, this guy's almost dead. Uh, this thing, his his rifle, you can see these are um, kind of refurbished rifles, so they're not as high-end. Uh, and part of that means this thing just electricity shoots out of it. This guy takes fucking 25 points of damage. <laughs> and is... Oh, and he actually he gets to make a duck save. Oh, which he makes. Okay, so he takes half. Okay. Uh, okay, he takes uh, 13, 12 points of damage uh, and is just as electricity shoots all over him. Uh, these these Gorbort Industries weaponry, you can't always trust them completely. All right, that was the first three. And then let's say two are going to shoot at your pet. Go, James. Oh, my fucking Christ. Um, <laughs> this is... <laughs> I'm glad we're using the tables. Um, Absolutely. That was a one and a two. Hell yeah. <laughs> Double nails, let's, let's see all those. Yes. <laughs> Unlock more by being an early backer on Kickstarter. <laughs> um, do you want to roll two d20s for me so we can see what happens here? Hell yes, I want to do that. <laughs> uh, 11 and a 17, sir. 11 and a 17. Oh, oh 17 should be good. It should be. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay, the first one, this guy makes a deck save, which he absolutely beefs um okay significant and quite memorable zap buzz sizzle this guy takes three five points of damage and is oh christ stunned (laughs) stunned for three rounds so this guy just lightning courses over him this is the guy with the 11 uh, and then the guy with the seven. Oh my goodness, Jesus Christ! Uh, the guy with the seventeen. Yeah, flood of scalding oil grease or something. Is that oolong? Uh, the weapon just pops a gasket and liquid shoots out of it. And say him and one other guy within. Yeah, could be. Uh, him and uh, one other guy within twenty feet of him have to make con saves. Okay, uh, one success, uh, and they're going to take a bunch of fucking fire damage. Yeah, so basically, uh, <laughs> liquid pours out six, five. Okay, one takes 21 points of damage, though it takes half that. And uh, as, as this liquid pops out and just blinds these guys. Man, these guys are in rough shape. These guys are just fucking blind. And then three more are going to shoot at Yusuf. And hopefully none of these guys are going to malfunction. I mean, okay, come one, on. One was really close. But uh, two, I believe, hit. Does a 16 hit you, Yusuf? Yes, for sure. Okay, two hits. Uh, a D... Well, there we go. Ooh, that's rough. The first one deals 12 points of damage. Mm. And the second one deals deals 7. Okay. You see, uh, Rizgik is like on top of the tank, kind of giving orders as these guys shoot at you. Um, 
The tank is not too far off in the middle there. You can see he's trying to get some of this operational. That brings up Yusuf. All right, well, this isn't going great. I don't love this. I'm real, real in pain. So I'm going to cast invisibility on myself. I'm going to whip out my dock and dub uh, dephagematizer. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> and I uh, cast uh, disappear myself. <clears throat> great. Uh, roll a d20 for me just to make sure this doesn't malfunction. 11. Okay, you're okay. Okay. Yusuf just becomes invisible. And I'm going to move myself closer to the tank. Okay. I, I said I wasn't going to drive it. I said that. <laughs> That's what he said. That's what I said. But you are definitely... Okay, you're getting close. On your next round, you can probably get to the tank. Okay. Um, okay. That brings up Rizgik. One of these guys I just... Have two hit points remaining. Oh my god. By the way. <laughs> By the way. Beachy does. Ones. If I uh, make my attack, it can give you some. Do you have to see me to do it? You have to be able to hear me. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> okay. Rizka doesn't see you. Let's choose a friendly creature. Would you describe yourself that way? I'm very friendly. <laughs> so I think you qualify. Okay. Uh, Ritzik is going to try to get one of these, one of the tank's functions operational. See if he manages oh. to pull this off. Oh my fucking Christ. That is a one. <laughs> <laughs> I am not making this up. <laughs> try to make this orange this is this is fucking real um that is a malfunction on the heavy mechanics table uh on the heavy weapon table uh that's rosie, live theater you, baby rosie would you like to roll that for me please i would love to oh the ones on the heavy mechanics table. That's 18 are... dude oh, oh my god good rosie, come on, gracious. buddy. gracious <laughs> hey look i'm trying to drive this thing here be a buddy rosie come on <laughs> i mean you asked Okay, heavy machinery. Wait, is that heavy machinery? Yes. Heavy machinery. Oh, heavy weapon, actually. Heavy sorry. weapon. Heavy weapon, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Oh, God. Rosie, what'd you get again? <laughs> what'd you get, Rosie? 18. 18. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Where is all this coming from? The effects of 15, 16, and 17 happen simultaneously. <laughs> there, is, there is a massive plume of noxious fumes. Tasty. <laughs> He's going to make a constitution save. I think you killed me too, right? Am I within 30 feet? I don't think you're close enough yet. I think you're okay, okay. going to... What about you know, 40 actually, feet? Yeah, you are within 40 feet, I will say. Okay, so 17 <laughs> will affect me. 17 will okay. affect me. <clears throat> 15, 15, I think you're not close enough. You can avoid the fumes. Um, he, what does he do? This is a cruel joke. Um, Rizgik takes uh, a little bit of damage. He takes three points of damage, but is knocked unconscious. <laughs> How did that work? Uh, it is a, a, he is like, um, it's, he's not knocked down to zero. He is just currently like, he is, he is suffocated by this. So he's currently just like, he basically faints from it. Oh, well that's handy. But now my hunter's mark is stuck, stuck on him. He might be, I mean, he, he's able to be revived by one of his, uh, par companions if he wants to. Gotcha. Uh, he does also, Jesus Christ, take, uh, okay, he succeeds, he succeeds on that one. So he's going to take, um, some lightning damage as well. Okay. Takes a bunch of lightning damage. 20 points of lightning damage. And 17. Okay, yes. So I need Yusuf to make a constitution saving throw for me, please. Okay. Make right. it. Make it. No, there's no damage. Right. All right. Make it. This make it. If you make it, there's no half damage. So. Make it. Yeah, it's no half damage. It, it, regardless, of, it, it's, it's like, it's pass or fail. It's pass or fail. Save or die. Can I use my, like, superiority die now for him? Or does right, it let's have to be? See. What is my so. con? My okay, con yeah. is okay. So this is a twelve. That ain't it, right? No, that ain't you, it. You need a fourteen. Yeah, that's a twelve. 
No. So you, um, I'm Rizkik down. Was, Rizkik was attempting to operate one of the mortar arrays. Um, somehow he he accidentally sprung, um, like the ammunition itself, and some of like the igniting, uh, like napalm fluid just pour, shoots out of here, and some of it catches the invisible Yusuf who've been sneaking up there. You guys think, oh, this is probably fine, and you see Yusuf invisible just burst into flames and falls yeah. over. Yeah, bad, bad, bad call, bad call on my part. <sighs> Yusuf. Bad luck is currently luck. down. Rizkik right. is also fucking like absolutely fucked over by that uh, by that round. Uh, that brings up top of round Zemo. All right. <laughs> Seeing my friend's invisibility wear off and him unconscious on the ground, I say that the news will come this morning as I take my Venusian hunting spear and upon the end affix my Hughes helpful hops and I throw it into Yusuf's mouth. <laughs> Is that a good thing? <laughs> so you're attempting to basically spear a healing potion into this guy's mouth. Yes, from however okay. far away I am, which is what... Yeah. That is fantastic. Yep. That's so, gonna be uh, just. You know what? Near impossible. Make I like an, it. I love it. Make an attack roll. Yeah. I will say normally a ranged attack against a prone creature has disadvantage. This guy is friendly and you're trying to help him, so I think but, it's gonna be a straight roll. Well, it's a. Mm -hmm. I, I'm lobbing. Yeah, sell me, it. sell me, please. I, I'm lobbing, lobbing it. See, it's gonna go up in the is air and come right down into his mouth. See, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and yeah, not I mean, spear out the back of his head because totally I'm, makes sense. I'm very, not hard. I'm a very not good. Hard. It's gonna like the spear part is gonna go like here, and the potion part is gonna go right in the mouth. I'm a very good tramper. I'm very good. Yeah, and fishing, you're probably very I, good at fishing. I never miss. I, I said never that. miss. I never miss. It's he like did spear say fishing. that. He I did, did say. I did that. say he, that. He did it's like spear that. fishing, except you're helping the fish. You're feeding the fish. Yes. Yeah. Easy. Easy. That's a that's a two. Yeah, it sounds like it works to me. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, a seven. I rolled uh, with my with my plus five modifier. That should like do it. Coach went right in the mouth. <laughs> right in the mouth. Uh, uh, right in the mouth. Fucking uh, two. You, Yusuf, can you just roll roll a luck check for me? Just okay. a straight D twenty roll. You you want okay, above okay. a ten? Ah, eighteen. Hey, 18. okay. This can I have that roll, please? The spear misses you. It does not cost you a death save. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I did there, it. There is some sort of reju reju rejuvenating substance like right next to you on the tip of a spear. Uh, you can see uh, some of these yes. BFF gorillas are visibly like, confused. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want my, my dog, uh, James. Can James Ooh, get James. to it and provide such services? Can so you've thrown your spear? Yes. You're asking if James can go and actually, this was all part of my plan. Uh, it, I wasn't all along. All along, all time. It, he's. We're playing fetch. We've done this many times. You just oceaned me here. Oh, this is actually <laughs> what I planned the whole time. I mean, this was. We just had to get to this point, and now it all makes sense. See. Um. You Layers. can. Okay, you can only take one round, one action per round between you two. So it, uh, your beast can do that on, on your next turn if you would like. Okay. okay. Um, you, you still have a bonus action if you'd like. Uh, I, I don't know what I can do with my bonus action. Um, I'm just going to have the... I'm going to have the dog get into position. It's going to come next to next to Yusuf. Cool. Okay, dog moves up. Uh, vengeance. I mean, I could do it. No, my no, dog. No, no. My dog's got no, no, no. this. Okay, you, all right. All yeah, right. you punch okay. somebody in the face. You have to avenge me. <laughs> Kill. Kill. I'm already dead. Right. Avenge right. me. Kill. All right. Um. So, I was outside of the tank. I don't think I'm shooting at uh, Rissick. Mm -hmm. Rissick. Um, would it take my whole turn to get in there, like on him? So you can you can get you can run there. I'll give it to you. Okay. All right. I run or actually, there. no, Yusuf couldn't get all the way. You can get like halfway there, unfortunately. If you if you want to use your action to dash, you can get there. But no, I want to shoot. Or but I could. I'm within range. Yes, you're you're going to cover about half the ground. You can get like you get kind of basically near Yusuf's body and shoot at them. All right. Um. Yeah. Or. 
for. I could use my second hand St. Olga's Molotov catapult. Ooh. And that sounds fun. <clears throat> yeah, Whatever I'm gonna that just is. I'm gonna throw a little Molotov cocktail uh his way. At um at Rizkik? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh go ahead and um roll your attack. That is a twenty-four. That, that hits. If you kill me, I expect a, a pretty good eulogy. You're far enough away that you're going to be okay. Right. You're the okay. you're the writer, man. No, no, I, I, I'm illiterate. I don't... Well, yeah, not you. I don't expect a eulogy from you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you one of those um, one of those animal hides, and I'll lay it on your grave. How so? Oh yeah, hell yeah. You'll be, be a fancy a grave. Very good looking corpse. That's all That's... I can hope for. Two points of damage and 14 points of fire damage. Oh, okay, good. I was worried for a second. <laughs> Tasty. Uh, on, this is on Rizkik. Okay, let's see. Um, roll it's a, 15 uh, feet. Area yeah. of effect, 15 feet. Uh, roll a roll a d4 for me and see who else you are managed to catch in that radius. Two. You like being on fire? Two? Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> it was two points of damage and then 14 points of fire damage? Yeah. 16. Okay. You um, you damage Rizgik, who seemed really tough, but is now just unconscious burning. Um, <laughs> That's what he deserves. That's bad. That's Dick. bad. And you, yeah, he's you soft. burn up. You burn up two of his gorillas. Who's soft now, oh. bitch? You can hear an especially anguished groan. And, <laughs> as he's just fucking on fire. <laughs> He should have just shot you. Okay. That is Vengeance's turn. Um, wait. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, yeah. well, I don't, I don't know. So since he's down, the death save thing, like, could I use, if I use the, uh, rally to give him temporary HP, does that work in this situation or no? Because he's oh, dead. Oh, interest. That's a good question about temporary hit points. I read a sage advice about being able to hear while you're unconscious, but I don't remember what what's being able to said. hear. Yeah. Oh, can you hear? I see. I, I, don't, I think. I don't know. you and your subconscious. I, I don't know off the Wake top of my up! head, so I'm gonna say yes. Make a ruling. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, there I don't know off the top of my head, so I'm gonna say yes. You can. You okay. can hear. Uh, All right. Vengeance's voice echoes in your as you're in this this unconscious state. It is so. What does it say? What does it say? What does it say? What does it say? It says, it says, it says, uh, wake up. You don't want to be, you don't want to be the soft one in your stupid little story. Call him a bitch. And you get all mad. <laughs> and, um, let's see. Oh, 1d8 plus one temporary HP if you want to roll it. Oh, you want me to roll? I, yeah, I can do that. 1d8 yeah. plus, plus what? One. Oh, fucking hell. All right, I get two <laughs> hit points. <laughs> You're up. I'm up. <laughs> I'll only take temporary it. HP. I'll take it. Temporary. Yeah. Yep. Temporary. Yep. It's, it's very temporary. Now life eat very, the goo on the life is fleeting. Temporary. My dog is temporary. my dog is sitting there with my when with my spear in its mouth and it, on the I'm end. I'm like, God damn it! Give me that fucking potion. <laughs> no, it's not a potion. It is a Hughes Healthful Hops. It's a beer. Give me them I think. hops. I think it's a I, beer. I, I like hops. It sounds it like beer to me. It sounds like beer. It sounds. I think it's a beer. Uh, that's two d four plus two healing, sir. Uh, th let's do that on your turn because yeah, the gorillas yeah, yeah, are up yeah, next. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I, it, I'm, I'm still laying down here like I'm dead. Oh, I you, haven't moved. You're, you're feigning death. Got you. I mean, I basically uh, am still. <laughs> two of them are. Two of them are dead. Two of them are blind. One of them is wounded. Or it's actually, sorry, three of them are dead. One of them is, two of them are blind. Another guy's weapon is destroyed. Oh, and is stunned. Okay, so we only at this moment have two with operational weapons. This is, this gourd board manufacturing is pretty tough stuff, especially once you get in the jungle for a while. So they're going to take shots at vengeance. Okay, at least none of them are malfunctions. Uh, does a, I don't think a... To, what is it? 12 is going to hit you, right? No. Okay. But the 21 will. So you're going to take uh, 8 points of damage as one of these guys manages to get a shot off on you. His uh, He's refurbished B Enfield 6006 N-Ray. Gets a blast off on you. 
and then the guy whose weapon is destroyed uh, pulls out a uh, a gourd nade that they had scavenged, and uh, fuck, he's gonna toss it at you guys, and you guys are in the radius of this sphere. So he's going to toss a grenade at you, Yusuf, and the dog. Poor Yusuf, we hardly knew ye. Let's see. Uh, let's see if he malfunctions first. No, super close, but no. Um, is that a is that a uh, roll? Yeah, so you guys are all going to get a deck save here. Can Yusuf, I, I'm going to tell you it's going to be reaction to cutting words. It <laughs> to cutting words. Can I smear job him his roll his uh, attack his, roll his mouth. We have not. We like, have not adjudicated whether you can cutting words someone down into a malfunction. This is something we're going to have to talk about later. Right now, I'm going to okay. say, fuck yeah, go for it. Oh, uh, ooh, okay. all right. So <laughs> okay. we got the play test rules here. We'll see how it rolls. Let's check this out. I'm, I'm just right. siding with right. chaos right now. All right. With chaos. <laughs> I'm going I'm a, I'm to a, I'm a smear job this guy. I'm going to like, you couldn't throw when you were a kid. You can't throw the shit like now. Uh, it's a <laughs> negative two. It, Negative two is exactly, I think, what exactly what you needed to get him into the malfunction threshold. <laughs> Fuck me completely. <laughs> um, go ahead and roll a d20 for me to see what happens to this beautiful all right, man. All right. Beautiful. That's a 12. 12. You guys are rolling good on these. Uh, get your grenade out of here. There it is. Uh, you got a 12. Okay. He pops the <laughs> he pops the pin on the grenade, and just from the hole where the pin comes out, just fucking grease shoots out all over him. <laughs> He's gonna make a con save. He does succeed in his con save. Okay, um, he manages to like toss it out of his way, but that is his turn. Um, as this fucking as this like grease just shoots out of it, and his turn is wasted, and you guys do not get exploded. Um, the two other guys are blind. They are essentially useless, and the other guy is stunned. Okay, that's that's the gorillas. Uh, that brings up Yusuf. Yusuf comes back to life and immediately saves his own life. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I I hate my situation right now. All right, so I'm <laughs> I'm I'm contemplating my entire life choices. <clears throat> I immediately grab my pen and like. This day was shit. <laughs> reevaluate, reevaluate your life. <laughs> this is a feelings journal now. <laughs> this is, this is, yeah. All right. Uh, the heroes are not doing great. <laughs> this was not um, my best choice. Right. All right. So I'm gonna stand up and. Don't forget James. He's right there with your with your beer. Nice frosty beer. Jesus. Beer. Uh. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. So. I'm trying to f remember from memory what my bonus actions are. Um, okay, so I will drink said uh, frosty beer with my action. Okay. 2d4 plus 2. All right. All right. House rule, so house rule, you can take a potion as a bonus action if you prefer, but I don't Oh, know. okay. Your, you can take one yourself as a bonus. Okay. Um, why not? Uh, you said 2d4 plus 2? Yes, sir. Also, I don't know if this will be helpful for you or not, but uh, my dog also has my Venusian hunting spear in its mouth that had the beer on it. So um, maybe if you need a melee weapon, there you go. How cl Thank you. Thank you for that. I, I could use a melee weapon. How close am I to uh, uh, Rizdik? Uh, I think canonic canonically about 30-ish feet away. He okay. is unconscious. Also, I forgot to mention two of his, the two blinded uh, gorillas tried to fumble over to wake him up while uh, on their turn, they could not do so. So at this point, standing up, I've got about, uh, you know, 15 feet of movement left. How many, how many people do I see standing up in front of me? Like, you see the two, two blinded people, right. the guy unconscious, anyone else? It's a little like bit chaotic. There. There's, uh, I guess, there's about there's one who's wounded, kind of behind you, that you guys kind of maneuvered around, or he's like mm -hmm. kind of behind and to the side of you. Uh, there's one. There's two unharmed guys who are, let's say, more up, um, 
like on the side to the right near some cover. Um, and there's a two blind guys, and then there's one guy who's stunned for two more rounds, um, who's just kind of right. wal- waltzing around in like the in like the the skid mark of the of the tr- tank. Okay, um, I'm gonna move up 15 feet, and I'm going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to where the fuck? Oh, there it is. Um, I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna take out my um, Crimble Radiator, mm. and I'm going to cast Sleep at Ooh. second at second level. I'm gonna cast, I'm up, I'm up cast it. The second nice. Level. All right. First thing, just roll a d20 for me to see if this malfunctions. Okay. Okay. Yep. 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 Good point. I think it did. Well. <laughs> all right. Is it a one? That, yeah, that's a one. <laughs> it, it's bound it's to a, happen. It's bound it's to happen. Can't, can't catch a break. It's, it's bound to happen. It's bound to happen. Now, question, a... <laughs> does the upcast happen first or the malfunction first? That is... I don't know that it matters, but it, that's a good question, though. It is question, a malfunction. Though. So I believe the malfunction, the malfunction comes first. Basically, you attempt to use this device, and it shorts so it, on it you. So a, does it take it any spell take slots? Or? It does uh, it uses the first one? I don't recall. I don't think it's not. It's let's say it, let's say right now. I don't remember off the top of my head. My yeah. word decides. So let's say it costs you a first level spell slot. Okay. Um, okay. That, that is a good. Hey, this is why we play test. That's a good question. Absolutely. That's right. The play test. Fuck me. <laughs> That's. <laughs> Yusuf has had such a chaotic twelve seconds. <laughs> what are you gonna... I mean, it's been a, it's been an up down up down roller coaster I mean, of emotions right here. The life um, of a newsie, man. Okay. It's tough. So uh, yeah, this is gadgetronic malfunction. Gad- yeah, gadgetronic malfunction. So all roll right, the d twenty so. for me, please. All right. all right, all right, here we go. Four. Four. Okay, this thing needs a tune up. Oh, okay. Uh. Oh, int- wait, hang on a second, one second. All right, I'm looking at two. every, every uh, Gadgetronic 4, okay. Interesting. So basically the spell goes off in an oh. unexpected way. Ooh. So what I'm going to say... Miscast table. Okay, roll your sleep, and then it's, okay. it's also okay. going... Roll your number, and it's G- also going to affect Vengeance, like separately. Oh, okay. Right. Um, uh, you okay, can roll so this. Do it at second level. At second level. Since, since, yeah, second do level. It at second level. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this still is functions. this is this is weird. Okay. So this is seven d eight. All right. Uh, six. Uh, eight. Plus eight is sixteen. Plus sixteen is thirty two. Plus five is thirty seven. Thirty seven. Okay. So that's going to affect a bunch of gorillas. Yeah. Um, Gorillas Question. first, right? Low hit points first. Right? So yeah, what we're gonna do, I think, it's, it, in the spirit of this malfunction, it's yeah. basically the spell is basically gonna go off twice. Once it's okay. intended, and once it's gonna ricochet. So um, you mean roll another d? Yeah, roll, roll again, and we'll see. Yeah, roll it again for vengeance. Sorry, oh. vengeance. It's fine. Huh? All right. So for vengeance, it's eight, ten, uh, twenty. Vengeance. Do you have more than twenty hit points remaining? 20. Ooh. Oh no! <laughs> Vengeance, this thing, you fire your uh, crimble radiator. Unbelievable. And it zaps out, and then it kind of shakes in your hands, and you're trying to corral it, and it kind of tilts on you and fires again. Um, Vengeance, you fall asleep. <laughs> this thing hits you. Uh, also, with 27, uh, one of the blinded guys falls asleep. Um, and then another, and then one of the other wounded guys also falls asleep. So two gorillas pass out hard, as well as your ally, Vengeance. Rip. That brings up Rizkik, who is still Hi. super un- Oh, sorry, did you have anything else, or is that- No, that's it. That's it. Yeah, any, just, any more like, chaos? That's enough. Right. That's <laughs> enough. Nope, nope. That was, that was bonus <laughs> action, action and movement. That was just chaos in a turn. Feels like plenty. <laughs> yeah, this fin's like too much. <laughs> Brings up Rizgik, who is unfortunately still unconscious. He's just murmuring in his sleep, like, hey, "You're all soft. That you're all so soft. <laughs> I'm not soft. You're soft." I was gonna shoot him in the head, but I couldn't because I had to stand up. I couldn't get close enough. 
You got brings up Z brings up Zemo. Uh, James is going to go uh, use his action to lick uh, VP's face to revive her. Very smart. All right. Am I uh, revived? Uh, yeah. Yes. And XMO yes. is going to be like you. You go on over there and you show her your belly. All right, right, that's your action. You have your bonus action if you want to do anything, Zemo. I don't know if I have a bonus action. I'm I sure could, that you... I, can I move mark? my Hunter's Mark to somebody who's alive? Uh, it might have to be, have to be once they die, oh, but I'm going to say yes, you can. All right. So oh, yeah, I'll, once they're... once they're Yes, yes, absolutely. All right, so I'll just move it to somebody who's standing that still has a gun that works. Okay. Yeah, Rizgik isn't technically dead, but he's unconscious, so I'm going to... Yeah, that'll count for that. Uh, so, yeah, you can move it to... You want to move it to a wounded guy or a... Uh, health guy uh somebody that looks like uh they're dead or close to dead but still has a functional weapon uh okay that's gonna be a full health guy unfortunately because all the guys that that's fine somebody who has a weapon yeah. yeah cool the ones without weapons are like it's a, yeah it's a, it's a fucking mess over there mm. <laughs> um okay um your james is it your pet james James uh, shakes Vengeance awake just in time for Vengeance's turn. You are uh, on, prone on the ground, and this Thrusk has just awoken you. I give him some belly rubs. There you go. I was going to say, pet and the then, damn dog. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, We're all dog uh, people. We know how this works. Yeah. Um, give Yusuf the side eye and uh, get up, and I guess I'll shoot at one of the full health people with I'm gonna try the F M O M Industry Industries Wave Disruptor gun. Hell yeah, do it. I haven't tried that one yet. Uh, uh fourteen. Uh fourteen hits. Wait. Um Twelve points of damage. Twelve points of damage. Nice. All right. Um. And anything do else? Do you in your still turn? need hit points, Yusuf? Yeah, I've got nine right now. Do you I'm need very... any? No, I'm I'm good. All right. Um. <laughs> all right, then I won't use any of my die. Okay. A uh, solid hit on one of these guys that brings up the gorillas. This one is asleep. This one is Hunter's Marked. It's going to run over and use its action to attempt to, to wake Rizgik. Okay, it successfully wakes Rizgik. That's a problem. Mm. <laughs> uh, no, this is what we wanted. You're right, because he's consistently fixing slash not fixing the tank. I was hoping he would fix the tank so I could jump in it when once it was fixed, but that yeah. didn't work. It looks, now that you get closer, it looks like it's less damaged and broken. It looks more like it's just hard to operate if you don't know what you're doing. Mm, mm, um, mm, so it looks like once, you, once you're kind of closer into it, it seems like the damage from the fall was superficial. This is a tough beast of a tank. Uh, it's just complicated. Uh, that is what I put in my journal. I put, uh, doesn't know how to operate tank. That's not fair. because not not because he's Venus, v, Venusian, just because he specifically doesn't know how to operate tanks. As most people don't know how to operate a tank, and th this one yeah. is especially over-engineered. Uh, as yeah. you get closer to, you can also uh, you can just notice as you get a better appraisal of it that this thing is supposed to be like it, it's supposed to be some hot new version of the tank. You can tell that it looks identical to the other tanks in the newsreels. Like, the armor is the same, the weaponry is the same, everything else. It, it appears completely the same, although you can see a little, like, sticker on the side <laughs> that says state-of-the-art hypersonic Twinkings metal kettle 4000 tea maker. New hat. New and improved. Yeah, so it apparently has, it, it's apparently been upgraded with some sort of fancy tea maker, but is otherwise uh, standard. Yeah, oh, mm. It is the British. Hey, look, uh, we... we we like our tea. <laughs> so that one uses his action to wake Rizgik. This one is still stunned for one more round. This one is both blind and asleep. This one is just blind. This one, let, I'm going to roll a d20 to see if he does something stupid. This one causes joy. This one is smart. Okay, <laughs> he he just, he kind of flails around a little bit, but does not 
throw a grenade randomly. And the last guy is okay, he's gonna return fire at Vengeance. Gets a fucking four, he misses. Uh, that brings up Yusuf's turn. Oh, Hell boy. yeah. <laughs> we all, all right. love Yusuf's turn. <laughs> he's like, finally, <laughs> I'm not Everyone's dead done. or down. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm like, uh, I was 30-ish feet away from guy who just woke up, Bizdick. Um, I'm now like 15-ish, 20 feet-ish away. Is he, is he tinkering with the tank again? Is he trying to do things with the tank? It's it ha- His turn hasn't come up yet again, so it, you're not sure. All right, great, uh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, I am going to... Um, Shit. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, ca- I'm gonna use my wooden uh, five pence macaron, and I'm gonna try to charm him. Oh. I would like for him to continue improving the tank. I would like him to get the tank operational. Oh. But I want him on our team. I want him to to make the tank ready. For me to jump into it. Dang. So you are trying to get your charm. You're ca- okay. You're ta- casting I'm charming charm him. I'm guy. charming. I'm, ch- I'm casting charm person on him. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and yeah. Uh, roll, roll my yeah. Roll your male function. Yeah, Jesus. Okay. Four. Okay. You're okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then he rolls yep. a. Was it a wisdom saving throw here? Uh. Oh, you're asking me real real D and D questions. Here. Oh yeah. Sorry. Uh, hold on. Person. Yeah. Is it no, no. I. I. I, I, I yeah. Cool. I got you. Uh, Trump person. Uh, Yes, it's a wisdom saving throw. Okay. And... Yeah, that is a nat 18, unfortunately, for a 22. Okay, that's that's good. That's fine. Rizkik wakes up angry. (laughs) So soft. All right, well, in that case, uh, I guess (laughs) I'll just go and... I guess I'll die. (laughs) Um... (laughs) All right, so that was action. Bonus action, I'm going to... Let's see, who's up next? Is it... Uh, someone knows up next. I think it's me. Um, yeah, I'm going <clears> to... <throat> I'm like, well... The Brave Adventurers did their best. Zoimo the Great saved his, his uh, trusted friend... Uh, trusted friend and ally, <coughs> Papazian, <coughs> and wrested the wretched tank from the hands of the devil, uh, Vrizdik. <coughs> and I'm gonna use Puff Piece to give a d6 to inspiration to, uh, Zoma. Yes. Very cool. Yes. For my bonus action. Nice. And then and I uh and then I'm going to like just walk and mm, shit. Uh <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to like walk right up next to uh Rizik and be like So dude. <laughs> uh so like I'm I'm like next to him at this point. So he's going to oh. choose is he going to fuck with the tank or is he going to fuck with me? <clears throat> Cuz I'm going to yeah. continue my movement. And you want to walk into melee range with them? Yeah. Shit. Okay, that does change things because it's it, you can't it's it, you can't it's hard to use a ranged weapon in melee in five e. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Shit. Like I'm moving into his space now. I'm this like, is like hey, a bro. really aggressive move, and it's very cool. Um, Rizgik finally wakes up, sees everything has gone to shit since he absolutely fucked this up. He, st- he uses half his movement to stand up, looks around, assesses the battlefield quickly. Um, points at the guy that you hunters marked. He uses yeah. bonus action to inspire fanaticism and says, "Take out the fucking sniper." Um, so he, his ally, he uses his bonus a- action to inspire his ally to take a shot at you, uh, Zemo. Real quick. Ooh, dirty twenty to hit. Yeah. Yes. Is, that's a d twelve. Okay, only six points of damage on you as one of the um, gorillas kind of shuffles up, sees you, and takes a shot. And then uh, Rizgik uh, looks right at you. He's kind of staying on top of the tank. And he goes, uh, hmm. 
Not as soft as I thought. Hops down dramatically onto the ground next to you, draws his spear, and comes at you twice. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Rip. We'll see. Yo, those are both super Okay, that's a nat 15 and 16. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, he absolutely respects you as he stabs the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> respectfully. He stabs you respectfully. Yeah, respectfully, I'm going to end you. Uh, this guy is tough. Okay. Oh, wow. That's a terrible damage roll for the first one. It is a total of three points of damage for the first hit. Still up. Okay. And sure. then, that's so bad. And then, okay, there we go. Uh, 12 points yeah. of damage for the second bad. hit. Yeah. Or actually, right. sorry, 16 points for the second hit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm down. Okay, he just barely nicks you with the first one. It's like, okay, no, wait, hang on. Hang on a second. And he just full on stabs you with the stomach. <laughs> you Too feel soft something. now. You feel his, his spear is poisoned and it kind of coursed into Ow. your stomach. Ow. Oh. Ow. Risk Ow. Uh, brings up Zemo. Am I still inspired even though the bard went down? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so what is that? A D4 added to attack rolls Six. or damage? Or D6 added Six. to attack rolls? Um... Uh, it's, it's one d6 that you can use when you want to. When I roll. want. After yeah. I roll. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. I want to use my Destroxulonic Plaza Force Destabilizer to cast Ensnaring Strike on Rizdik because uh, I'm mad. I say, oh, yeah. no, not Yusef. Who's not the reporter. Not the reporter. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be against the Geneva Convention, if that exists yet. So I'm going to roll to attack him. That's not good. Um, I'm going to use the Bardic Die. Okay. Okay, so that's better. So that's going to be 11 to hit plus uh, 6, so 17. That hits. All right. Close. That hits. Nice die, thank you. Uh, nice. That's nice. gonna deal five, uh, seven total damage, but then the ensnaring strike should go off, and I rolled a nat six for my attack roll, so it shouldn't malfunction. Nice. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Uh, and let me double check what ensnaring strike does. <clears throat> oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, he is ensnared. You, uh, yeah, you augment your attack with this, uh, with this. Can Dextronic Plaza Force to stabilizer, and it kind of wraps around him, and this ray energy kind of holds him in place. There we go. No Badass. more messing with that tank. Badass. And okay. Quit, and quit messing with my boy. My boy. Wait, oh, brings and up. I, I'm gonna mm -hmm. move my dog into position. I'm gonna tell him. Okay, into like melee with him. Yeah, go over there and get by. What's going on? Cool. This dog just keeps hanging out with unconscious Yusuf. Uh, up brings brings up next is vengeance. I take out my Thompson 6000 Valk Capitulator. I'm not say that. Um, and I attack. Do it. I shoot him. Do right. it. Shit. <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> it's always good when somebody says like shit after they roll their dice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but wait. Hi. Oh, wait. There's more. There's more. There's not more. Oh. <laughs> There's not. Because I already used my adrenal squeeze. I believe you. Uh, yeah, as you did, unfortunately. Dang. Uh, so your shot harder. misses Rizgik. Um, I can't, like, yeah. Dang. Uh, okay. Carry could... on. Okay. You could <laughs> no, use your I... rally ability if you want to, but whatever you want to do here. Oh. Who, does anyone need hit points? Uh, the guy that is dead does. I mean, if you if you have clarified <laughs> that temporary hit points work, I'll allow it. True. All right. All right. You want me that's to roll the, this time? That's the precedent. <laughs> uh, wait. How many times is that? Just per. Uh, I have hopefully. four like superior. Oh, okay, okay. I think you've okay, only used okay. two of them. I yeah. used okay. this. Is, this will be my third. So. No, no I'll, I'll do it. If that's what you're doing, I'll I'll accept the the. Burden. The role responsibility. A role responsibility. If that's what yeah. your choice is. That's is that choice. what you're doing? Okay. Yep. Uh, 
Let's not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that. Let's, uh, let's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm up. I'm up. Yeah, I'm up. That's what matters. That's, not, that's what matters. I The gesture, uh, the thought is matter, what matters. Uh, that brings up the gorillas. One is asleep. One attacks. One takes a shot at Zemo. Yes. Fight me. Abs big it's the snipers. Misses. And saving you are, Private Ryan. You are like up in the in the in the in the brush in this weird Venusian fungus and trees and all this. Pop, and the shot pop. goes wide. Shots fired um, from the grassy knoll. Here I am. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I told Nothing. you it was gonna get weird. Nothing safe from the from the satire, including JFK. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't ask Greg while he was here. How do you feel about JFK? What do you think did it? <laughs> What's your uh, thoughts on conspiracy theories? I can tell you that at least in this scenario, there's only one shooter, okay? So <laughs> really nail him down here while we got you. Okay, the other guy has the at the end of his turn his stun wears off, but he is that's the end of his turn. The other guy's asleep, the other guy's blind. He's feeling stupid. He's gonna take a blind shot at vengeance so he's gonna do disadvantage uh that does miss unremarkably guy fires a shot randomly off Ping! and then one guy's okay he's gonna take a shot at uh at vengeance that's a fucking four okay they miss the gorillas fire off impotently in in a panic uh you can hear them chattering to each other and they're going they're not soft they told us they were soft. they're not soft and they're starting to like panic <laughs> <laughs> uh, that brings up Yusuf. All right. Okay. All right. So. Still have a spear in you? <laughs> yeah, you got no, the spear. Uh, I do have a. What, what do you want me to do with a spear? I don't attack Fucking people stab spears. this guy, man. <laughs> so, all right. So, at this point, I am in melee range. Uh, ish. Yeah. Ish. Ish. Um, uh, Rizgik, who is this, this tough, like, gorilla commander, looks at you and goes. If you want to do one-on-one -on -one spears, we can do that. Never no, cross the streams. <laughs> I, I, I say fuck that. This is I, a duel. I, say, I say fuck that. And then I pull out my uh, discreet gentleman weapon, the victorious mongoose concealable ray pistol. It's just like shoots out of my my handcuff. I'm like, no, fuck that. And uh, the description from the, the, the reason I bought this is because it said allowing the discreet gentleman to secrete a powerful wave weapon on their person. The Victorian mongoose is a perfect foil. Should a pickpocket, pirate, or popper catch you unawares? This motherfucker's caught me unaware several times, so fuck him. So it pops out, and I'm like, nah. And I'm like, poof. So I'm gonna try to shoot him point blank. Now, Hell yeah. we're close, so let's, uh, let's make sure this doesn't malfunction. <clears throat> yeah. There's a 13, okay. You're fine. Yeah, all right. And let me roll uh, to make sure it, it actually hits. I am going all to, right. normally this is a disadvantage on ranged attacks. I, because this is a concealable, like, hand, like, like, yeah, it's basically built for this. I'm going to, I'm going to live rule that this is just a straight up roll. Okay. All right. Then that was a 22. Yeah, that hits. Uh, it, it's, it's just a D4 plus two. So it's not that much damage, but it is point blank. Okay. So that's four plus two. So six damage. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Max damage. Right. Um, okay, so that was my action. Uh, for my, for, my, for my bonus action, I'm gonna pull out my my wooden pence, uh, five pence macron, and heal myself with healing word, <laughs> because <laughs> fuck, because damn. Um, <laughs> don't fuck it up now. Con don't, I'm kind of getting fucked. Don't uh, malfunction, bro. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm doing better doing better i'm up to like uh full eight hit points now cute. uh, uh action bonus cute? action <laughs> okay <laughs> all right cute. can i mm. i'm gonna risk it i'm going to try to jump in this tank do it oh shit okay he's... yes risk is gonna get an attack of opportunity on that's you. right that's okay. why i said no risk no no, no. he's it. he's ensnared he is ensnared i believe he not restrained though, right? Let me see. That's actually a good question. Is he res is ensnared and restrained? Oh shit, he is actually restrained. Yeah, he's he going to get disadvantage on this then. Disadvantage, okay. He can't. He can't physically like you know. He can't move out of his. Space. He's right, going right, to spit right. at okay. you as you try to do that. Okay. This is. I knew you were soft. 
I am soft. Okay, the the it's a nat thirteen is the worst. Yeah, dude. Sorry, uh, yeah, it's a that's nineteen fine. to that's hit. That's gonna hit me. That's gonna hit. That's gonna hit. <clears throat> he gets a spear on you as you as you turn your back can, to him. All right, so let's see if he can do eight. Probably can. I mean, I know he can. He does eighteen points of damage. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Look up, down, Ooh. up, down. We're 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 moving through this evolution of of alive and dead. Up, down, up, down. Takes... All you do is die. Okay. <laughs> all I do is die, died. Yusuf <laughs> takes two, two and a half steps away and then collapses onto the table. <laughs> I'm not even gonna have my dog revive you. With my with my dying breath, I'm like, maybe some of you melee motherfuckers should do something. <laughs> <laughs> the bard is just one on one in. <laughs> yeah. It's Rizgik's turn. Uh, it is, um, I had forgotten also, I, I rolled for the Incinerian Vines. He was stuck in it. So at the start of his turn, he takes 1d6 damage, if you want to roll that for me. Yes! Uh, Zemo. Two. Two points of damage, all adds up. And he is, he's fucking restrained. This guy cannot catch a break. I'm right there next to him, though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And you are, <laughs> God, I, I am why are prone. you saying this? <laughs> I, I am, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. I am gonna roll a d20 on this. If or did if you, you fall inside the tank away from him? Absolutely not. <laughs> oh. You were like slumped over a tread. <laughs> I'm like right next to him. This is. I'm gonna roll a d20. If it's above an 11, he respects you enough that he's not gonna try to stab your corpse. Because <laughs> ass up over the tread. He's that like, is a nine. I could not. Yeah, there I, you go. I can't do like, it. Fuck this part. I can't do you it. Go, eh. Okay. It is normally it's advantage on a prone creature but he has disadvantage because he's restrained. So it's just a straight up roll. If he hits, it's going to be two death Automatic crit, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's got two attacks. It's a natural nine plus six is a 15. Hits. Okay, that's one. So that's two death that's save two failures. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I am going to roll again to see <laughs> okay. if he's going to attack your corpse again. This is, uh, this is, I'm going to say, if he gets... Don't he save gets, my feelings. Paul kills me every week. Every week, <laughs> yep. That's true. Also, <laughs> all the feelings are already written down in his feelings journal, so it's right. They're all written down. They're already saved. I'm gonna call this. What's your? Oh, what's your charisma? Just what's your straight up charisma score? Charisma score is 19. Ooh. Holy fuck! I regret asking that. Yeah. <laughs> He's very charismatic. Uh, it's like asking a, it's like asking a fighter what's their strength score. Like, yeah, I mean, that was that was super want, stupid. Yeah. Instead, really you're, okay, know. your modifier is plus four. I'm gonna set that as 14 is the threshold. If he okay. he's just gonna roll a straight d20. If it's above a fourteen, he's gonna stab you again. Okay, that's fine. Look how cute I am. Don't stab me. Mm -hmm. It's a fucking seventeen. There you go. All right. I mean, it is what it is. He's like, he's not soft. I respect him enough to try to fucking. That's kill right. Him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill. I'm this. This dude's fucking with me. Of all the soft right. people here, he is not one of them. He rolls another straight up just attack roll on your sure. body. That is if. Nat two. Is that a hey! malfunction? Is that a malfunction? I I his I spear, his, unfortunately, a spear cannot malfunction. It is okay, a spear. Okay. <laughs> I survive one more round. But you bet. He he looks at you. Maybe there's something about you that he doesn't he doesn't really want to do it. Maybe he hesitates. We'll never know. But the spear point just like glints off of your um. This guy could write my story. Best. <laughs> Yusuf and Riz Dick. Uh, expansion pack available on patreon.com. There you go. Forward slash Crowbar Creative. One of the gorillas like is like looking over. It's like, are you seeing this? There's like kind of something going on there. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a love then, story. This is like a this is like a uh, this is like an enemies to fr to lovers kind of situation yeah. going on right now. Yeah. The guy goes like a, a, This fanfic writes itself. There you go. The guy looks over. He's like, are you seeing this? And the two blind guys are like, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. What are you talking about? <laughs> Accepting art commissions. Uh, uh, all right. Top of the round is Zemo, followed by Vengeance. Ah, uh, fuck. I don't even know what to do. Um, are there any corpses near me? Uh, near Zemo, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, you could probably get to a corpse, I'll say, sir. Specifically, sure. a corpse with a gun. Are you out of guns? No, I'm not out of guns. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll say you can get to a corpse with a gun, sure. All right, because uh, seeing one somebody go down and this battle turning into... Um, 
um, not turning into necessarily, but um, degrading. I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Ah, wait, I can't do this yet. My dog needs to die first before I go John Wick. Okay. Well, whatever. I'm going to go grab that gun, and I'm going to take my righteous bison in one hand, and whatever gun I find in the other, and I'm going to start... I'm going to start blasting, okay? <laughs> Thank you for making me Google two-weapon fighting in D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely forget how it works. Um, so it's, a, it's a doozy. <laughs> I'm just going to start uh, hey. blasting. Stay tuned for the uh, full book where we really carefully explain how you fired two ray guns at a time. That's right. And right now, we're <laughs> doing it live. We're doing it live, okay. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Uh, I'm going to target the one with the Hunter's Mark first. And yep. then pew. And then, and then pew. You know, I actually don't think this is even ideal because my two-handed sniper rifle does 2d10 plus 2, and my pistol only does 1d8 plus 1, but I don't fucking care. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm going to... It's, do it. it's cool. I'm going to cool. do it live, okay? <laughs> yeah, just fucking do it. I'm, I'm going to do it. All right, here we go. Um, so I'm just going to start rolling some dice here, and... Um, oh, those are 10. I don't need dice anymore. I need an 8. So here we go. Uh, all right. Uh, first attack is a uh, twenty-one, uh, dealing. Uh, yeah. Uh, dealing five six plus four um, damage. So that's uh, ten total to the one with that is Hunter's marked currently. Okay. Is that guy dead yet? He is not. I think that's the first time he's been hurt, actually. Oh, okay. And then the other attack roll was. A natural twelve. I don't uh, know if I if I add my range attack bonus with dual weapon fighting or not. So I forget how it works, but his armor class is twelve, so that's gonna hit. So that should hit then, and then yeah. that is also ten damage. So twenty oh, yeah. total Jesus. damage. As okay, I, this guy looks grievously wounded. All right, uh, and I think <laughs> it uses my bonus action to. Yeah, I think it's gonna be the second shot. Yeah. Okay, so and I, and I've broken cover. I'm just walking like. And um, my dog is going to stand on top of uh, Yusuf's corpse and be like, Swear. no, don't attack him anymore. Mm. Oh, mm -mm. cool. Yep. And then That's if he, good and dog. then, That's a and, good boy. and then if he kills my dog, then I can go John Wick. Okay. Oh, gotcha. true. True. Yes. So. Awesome. Yeah. I love this. Uh, that brings up vengeance. All right. He's going to kill your dog. I know. And then I'm going to get advantage in all my attack rolls. It's going to be dope. You'll, you just watch. Gonna kill that dog. Is that how it works? <laughs> I don't know how it works. Ask. ask oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> ask Grackle. It should. That should help me. How it works. Coming soon. Patreon.com forward slash John. That's how you fix Beastmaster. It's like if they kill your dog, you get advantage on all your attacks. I mean, there you, you go. Just you absolutely. You go John Wick state. mode. You just go <laughs> John Wick mode. I've had I've had enough beers that that might be how it works. I mean, uh, there we go. But let's see what vengeance is up to. Um. So, uh, Riz the Dick is. Uh, I love that. Mm. Where? He's ensnared by the tank. Um, he like he's next to the tank, like ensnared by uh, this shit. Uh, he looks yeah. very wounded. I'm going to kill him. Yes. Do it. Prove it. Prove it. Thompson, 6,000. Shit. <laughs> uh, oh, he's restrained. You get advantage on these attacks. Okay, how do I do that? Uh, roll roll again. again. Although the first roll sounded more... Uh, I think it was no, even worse. No, you did not. No. <laughs> no. No, it was you're, the same. <laughs> no. What was it? A five. Nah. Okay, that's plus, fine. Plus eight. Okay. That's pretty uh, good. 13, unfortunately, uh, will not hit Rizgik, unfortunately. I thought you rolled two ones in a row, and I was going to be like, that's impressive. No. No, I right. didn't. Um, and, okay, so... Can... I can I use my like action to just get as close as I can to him. Uh, you can use movement to get up like, like right next to him. Behind yeah. him, behind him. Sure, you can like square up next to uh, John the dog, uh, and and you so. Uh, excuse me, it's James. No, no, behind Rizdik. Oh, James, I'm so sorry. Yes, yes, you can get up next to Rizdik with your movement. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm behind. Rizdik. You have to know this and... dog's name before you murder it. Okay. <laughs> um. I'm not. Do you need my di last superior dice, Yusuf? 
No. Wow. No, I'm okay. That's very selfless of you. No. Right. Use it uh, for some. Use, use it for killing. No, use it. You're, you're like you're, dead, right? Yes. But your 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 whole thing is. All right, I use it. Oh, okay. Now don't don't fuck it up. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> you don't understand. You're putting too much pressure on me. All right. Uh, it's fine. Jesus Christ. I mean, All right. I can take it back. No, 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 that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Hey, I rolled an eight. I didn't yeah. roll a one. <laughs> Feeling great. Feeling, Feeling great. Plus one. Got it. Got it. All right. That brings up the gorillas. One has completed stun, so it's operational. One is blind. Two are asleep. So there are three like active gorillas right now. They're gonna take shots. Let's do two. No. Uh. I'm like this. Yeah. No. It's not. Nothing's going for you, Sif. You're just I'm a dude right on the ground with a dog over here. I, I just want to yeah. point out that I'm making no, a lot of. They don't want to shoot at me. I'm walking down the hill, dual wielding pistols. I mean, that's that's kind that's of that's extremely true. cool. Yeah. That's extre you're, extremely yeah. cool. You're, you're all very attention one? grabbing. <laughs> he doesn't know <laughs> who to shoot at. <laughs> uh, they're gonna do one for each of you, uh, each of you meaning the dog. So, yeah. uh, first dare. one is gonna be on Zemo. Uh, is a nat 18 is gonna hit. Yep. Uh, minimum damage, so it only does four points of damage on you. <sighs> and then next one is gonna be on Vengeance. It's a fucking nat 3, misses. Not a mal- wait, not a malfunction? Not a malfunction. Very close. Jesus. And the last one shoots your fucking dog, James. No. It's a nat 15. It hits the dog. No! Not James. Not James. It's a CR. Oh my Christ. It's, it's a, a CR really half. good roll. It's a CR Hell yeah. Kill, the, kill James. Oh, I don't does, kill James. Does 14 points of damage. I, oh, I, shit. I don't have the beast Jerry in front of me, so... Oh, that's right. Hang on. I, I assume it's right. dead, though. That, yeah. Uh, That'd be a lot of hit Do I Do dog. I become a barbarian and enter enraged? Let me double check your, your <laughs> thrust kit points. But... It has CR one half, and I think a... it has okay. It has twenty two hit points. What? Holy shit! Yeah. What? It is as much health as I do. <laughs> fucked up, man. I don't know what if that says more about the beast or the bard. Um... Listen, listen. It says a lot. About, it says a lot about both. It's. I would I say your 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 dog is grievously wounded. Is whimpering pathetically over the almost dead corpse of Yusuf. It does bring up Yusuf's turn. Yusuf, I need a. Wait, are you conscious? I'm no. conscious. You're conscious. Oh, he that's feels right. Great. It's feeling I super good. I don't feel great. <laughs> <laughs> you feel great. <laughs> okay, I feel great. All right, I'm going I uh, fuck me. Um. How, uh, okay, I've got uh, Vizdik still here. Because right next to you, there's a dog basically standing over you, and uh, Vengeance is right next to you too, and there's a few gorillas kind of scattered about. And he hasn't fixed the tank any more than the last attempt that he did, which was a complete and utter failure. Correct, he just he just shot people last time. So no, the tank does not seem to be operational, operational so in any sort of way. The tank is, it's not broken. It is just complicated to, um, to operate. I am could, not a smart man. You could attempt to operate any of the shit on the tank and I could just see to. how that goes. I'm, but I'm next to him. If I attempted to use it, would, would attempting to use the tank provoke an opportunity attack? Uh, let me see if there's anything that would, I mean, yes. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything that you could get to without doing that. Not really. You could maybe yeah, you could try fine. to get the you could try to get the turret on top, but that would really be pushing it. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like a little choice. Okay, okay. No, I'll say actually you could get to the the um like the there's like the machine gun basically the rapid fire support weapon on the turret you could you could get to without leaving his range i would say use it use it do it you won't do it do it <laughs> you were given those nine hp to for one purpose for one purpose only one purpose and one person only all right all right all right all right all right 
Uh, I'm gonna... 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I, I gotta count my spell slots. Fucking... Sp who chose fighter? Yeah. No spell slots. I mean... Cho choosing, choosing... I missed the every yeah. time. <laughs> I, I get you. Uh, alright, 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 alright. Uh, I got a couple spell slots left. I'm gonna healing word myself because I'm a bitch and I don't have a lot of health points. Um, okay. Uh, so 9 to 2d4 plus it's going to be 15. All right, so I have 15. Okay, I have 15. I'm going to uh, move to the tank. Okay. And I'm going to attempt to look at this tank again. Yeah, the, the rapid fire support ray gunner, I'm going to say is rapid is, support uh, ray gunner, yeah. two shots per round. Okay. I'm going to attempt to operate the rapid fire support ray gun. Okay, go ahead and roll a d20 for me and add, uh, I'm going to say for you, it's going to be plus two for your operations here. Okay. All right. All right. Shit. Which d20 do I pick? All right. I'm gonna pick this one. The lucky one. All right. That's decent. Uh, uh, 18. Oh, yeah. Are you talking, are you targeting Rizkik or who? Uh oh. I did not have a target in mind. Uh, okay, yeah. So let's say you were able I with that, you were able someone? to. No, you're good. You, with that, you were okay. able to operate it, and you can you can use that as a as a shot at somebody. Okay. It says okay. Rapid fire support ray. It says two shots per round. Mm -hmm. So I can choose. Can, do I have to do two shots in the same uh, target? Yeah, you'll do a second. You can do two targets. No, I'm gonna target Rizdek. He oh, he shit. tried to he tried to stab me. As, as a dick move, he I'm gonna shoot did him. Stab you. I, he didn't I, just try. He, he did stab you. Okay, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> calm down. Uh, I'm gonna. I respect him enough to return the favor. Soft. Yeah, I don't think he's soft. I think I I I respect him. That's and something a soft with, person would say. And I'm going to respect him with uh, two shots, uh, with this rapid fire support ray. Uh, probably so gonna two, die. 2d6 flashing damage. Yeah, uh, twice right. if you're doing both twice. shots at him. Yeah. Alright, I'll, I'll roll all four at the same time. Or, yeah, all four at the same time. Uh, um, that's gonna be 2, 4, 8, 12. 12 points of two, damage. 2, 4, 8, 12. Yeah, 12. He is on death's door. As okay. you, as you, within range of him, he watches you as you just, like, scramble up a few feet swivel this gun around for him, like push the buttons frantically and just do, 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 into him, just cutting him, like cutting into his stomach, basically. He looks terrible. He's groaning. Yeah, uh, that's all I got. Brings up Rizgik's turn. He says, not as soft as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Costs blood. Uh, you guys aren't willing to do what it takes to win. And he's going to... Team, we're on the opposite sides. Yeah, with that with that dramatic line, he's gonna stab the dog once. No! <laughs> Why are you stabbing the dog? <laughs> James! No! Come on. The dog. no I literally just shot the you dog. with a tank! Come on! Out of spite stabs what the dog. What the fuck? Come on! Seven oh sorry, eleven points of damage on the dog. <laughs> That's some bullshit. <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? He does it because he's mad. Uh, That's, not 11... a That's not a spite, dude. That's eleven points of damage on the dog. <laughs> Second attack. They don't call him uh, Chris Dick for it. no reason. Second attack stabs at Yusuf. Or second attack, he's going to stab at. Oh, God, he's going to stab at Yusuf or. It's so unnecessary. It. Also, my dog is dead, right? Because only had 22. Yeah, it took yeah, 15, now another 11. He killed your dog. Maybe just purely out of spite. Right. So uh, tell me about the John Wick yeah. rules of this that, uh, of this yeah. uh, setting. I, I will give you advantage on your attacks in the next round. Yes. <laughs> uh, he's going to. Uh, second attack is going to attack at Vengeance. Yeah. Is Wait. a hit. Vengeance, sorry. And then, uh. Oh, fuck, that's really good. Nine, uh. 15 points of damage on Vengeance. Fill up. And then he uses his bonus action to command one of his gorillas, and he says, Shoot that soft prick. And he <laughs> fire, and the guy fires at Yusuf. <laughs> Ooh, hey. 11 plus 3 is a 14 to hit. That just misses, I think. I think, I think, is it a tie, or what is it? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Four, oh, no, that hits. That hits. Nah, I'm, okay, and this guy, oh, let's see. Wait, does he this get is... partial cover from the machine gun? Oh, he does! Do Shit. I? 
Yeah, in the front. He does. Oh. It misses. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it does. That's in it. Good, very good catch. Thank that. you. Yeah, that was gonna call. do. That was gonna do thirteen points of damage on you. Oh, that was okay. really. I'm just tired of watching him fall down repeatedly. So. I'm... Are you? <laughs> oh, also, uh, Zemo, roll your D6 of ensnaring strike damage. Four. Four. Nice. Okay, this guy is like barely hanging on. Uh, Zemo, that that brings you up. Your dog just fucking died. Can I get to Riz Dick? <laughs> Um, I will say with the with the strength of pure rage, yes. <laughs> we could have been on the same team. I'm gonna run up to him, and uh, I am just going to put. <sighs> I run up to him. I look down at my Venusian hunting spear on the ground. Then I look at him, and I look at my righteous bison. And I look at this other gun I got, and I'm just going to put both of them up against his forehead and just, or his temple, or, yeah, his forehead and just unload right into his face. Do it. All right, roll him up. All right, so I have advantage, but it's on his forehead, so it's disadvantage. So straight up rolls. Okay. Um, uh, one is a 19, and the other is a 17. The, oh, let me it double rolls. check. 19 Look definitely up. hits. They both hit. Oh, shit. They both hit. Look them up, Buttercup. Now, um... First one is... Oh, a total of 10 damage. Zemo, please tell me how you killed this man. I run up, dodging gunfire and ray gun shots. Do a forward roll. Do a power slide underneath somebody's legs. <laughs> Run up the tank. I, I, I didn't prepare a quote for this. Um, yeah. Uh, Look, you got lost, You got uh, plenty of time. You must work at McDonald's because your soft serve machine is broken. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Speed>. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. <laughs> Riz get cracks and <laughs> falls to his knees. He uh, says, "You'll never win. Not with, not like this. Not when you're so." so... <laughs> <laughs> falls to the ground. Makes as he dies, makes eye contact with your with your pet dog James, and you can hear James as he's dying. One last breath. Just, he saw that. He saw the vengeance. He knows what happened. There it is. There it is. The remaining gorillas scatter into the jungle as their leader is killed. Uh, it has gone much later than I planned. Uh, but we got carried away. A brief epilogue. You have taken control of this tank. The gorillas scatter into the distance. You can hear. On various sides of you, sounds of other factions approaching. Um, you know, there's clergy somewhere in the area trying to get here. You know, there's um, you know, there's the BCF soldiers are trying to get here. You don't know who's in the jungle, but you know there are people approaching. As a quick epilogue, what do the three of you do with this tank now that you have this massive power at your control? Oh fuck! What do I want to do with this tank? Parade. A parade? <laughs> That's what you want to do with this parade? The tank is have a parade? <laughs> yeah, is... we're heroes. <laughs> yes, let's have a parade. We're going to have a parade. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be balloons and soft serve ice cream. And, and the recognition we deserve. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you actually do, and we'll, we're going to wrap up a lot here in just a minute. You do, you actually end up getting recognition as some of the heroes of Split Gut Gulch. That's right. As the people that helped yes. make sure the town was not flooded. You throw yourself <laughs> a parade with this mm -hmm. massively powerful <laughs> tank. The people around in the streets, just a mixture of cheers and obvious nervousness <laughs> as this band of buffoons just roll through with this massively powerful tank that saved all their lives. Yep. Um, yep. 
the balance of power in this area absolutely unsettled but who the hell knows how and <laughs> the curtain falls uh for now on this band as they have captured the tank and slain the bloodthirsty rizgik Graxon. oh and the that, town is safe that's wonderful thank you hell very yeah. much uh, Gra- holy shit job, guys DM, that was fun <laughs> fantastic that great was job, great guys. uh that was that was that was so much fun uh rosie really thank you fun. for joining us thank you uh will appreciate you being here uh, my you. brother thank you very much uh once again grackle uh thank you thank you um uh, la- uh, last chance for too, yeah. yeah uh last uh chance for a plug here yeah i got a couple of plugs i have to make unfortunately uh we've got the uh want to thank again greg broadmoor a for creating this world and for coming by and talking to us it's absolutely amazing uh, I want to thank Exalted Funeral, who's uh, really putting this out, publishing all this stuff. Um, please check out the Quick Start. is available for free. Um, and they have so much more content also on their website. All sorts of different publications at ExaltedFuneral.com. Got to plug Crowbar Creative uh, and my co-writers, Brian Sleba and Zach Tyler. Brian Sleba, who put this all together. Huge thanks to him. Kevin McLeod for the music. Um, we were using uh, The Descent today. Uh, the link will be in the YouTube description for this. Um, thanks so much to you guys, uh, to Paul for putting this together, to Will for playing with us, and Rosie for playing us and bringing this chaos uh, and really getting into the spirit of uh, this world that we're trying to play in. I really appreciate it. And thanks again, us of course, to the viewers for watching this. Uh, we had a lot of fun tonight. I hope uh, if you manage to stick through this much longer session than I planned because we're having too much fun, uh, I hope you enjoyed this too. So yes. uh, thank you very much to everyone. Was wonderful. Had a great time. Had a lot of fun playing. Dr. Gordbort's scientific adventure violence. Um, come for the, uh, you know, violence. Stay for the avoidance of the uh, fucking communists by the poison. <laughs> <egg>. um, <laughs> and check out the Kickstarter in August. Yes, uh, it's definitely. It's going to be great. The full book is going to be fantastic. This is just scratching the surface of... Um, the, the nonsense and the mayhem that we're going to get up to. Wonderful. We're going to conclude by uh, playing the animation one more time. Uh, check out the description below for all the links to everything you need to back and enjoy this wonderful Kickstarter. Thank you again.